let's begin then. So uh, today is another episode of the HMG podcast. My name is Jacob, and today I've got with me Daniel. Daniel, you remembered his name? Fantastic. So um, just me and Dan tonight, and we're just going to be talking about the armies of Imperial Japan in our next Armies of series for Bolt Action. You know, the game we all yes. talk about and play. Um, yeah, she is Dan. We're meant to, we're meant to meant clink to, meant to click that the rule we, books. <laughs> we did talk about um, that. But but, we... Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we might get straight into it. So um, Armies of Japan, uh, personally for me, uh, I collected them very early in my bolt action career, um, probably not long after I met you. Uh, Nick collected um, Marines and I went for Japanese for a little bit. Uh, and then I did a commission paint job for a friend as well, but I haven't really stuck around with them before. Uh, and I've kind of seen them as a little bit as a novice one dimensional. Uh, and you've had a lot of recent experience with it. And obviously you've developed in your career much earlier than I have in Bolt. So um, you might have some good insight to how to play Japanese effectively. Um, I think... I think for me, the initial uh, is not that much of a draw thematically on the army when it comes to cool toys. Um, so a lot of the other nations have bigger, more interesting tanks and infantry and that kind of thing. And these really seem to be an early war faction. Um, but yeah, tell me about it, because uh, I guess from a novice perspective, they seem less interesting to collect, but from a competitive perspective, they're actually very interesting to play. Yeah, I think um, like you've, you've touched on some probably key differentials there. It's like most people, when they look at the um, the Japanese army, they're coming at it from the understanding of the other nations and so what they've got access to in terms of toys and, and uh, toys. Um, how they interact, what sort of units they get, what sort of special rules that reflect, you know, how I can operate and um, perform different tasks. The, the armies of Japan is quite different. And to really appreciate why, you have to understand a little bit of the history. So in, in the Japanese um, military structure, as it was at the time, there was a massive conflict between the army forces and the naval forces. Uh, the, yep. air, the air forces for them were considered subservient to either of those two primary um, drivers, which makes sense when you think about the Pacific Island and the Pacific theatres. Um, their campaigns were driven by the ability to mobilise quickly. That happened with boats and the land mm. power that they needed to hold um, their original invasion in through Manchuria. Um, it sort of reached a point where they went, we've captured our capital gains we don't really want to antagonize Soviet Russia anymore um, so we'll fight you know down towards the Dutch British holdings um, down and move down towards India but ultimately the, the, there wasn't a whole lot of extra stuff that they could just go and grab on the land because it was just open expanses mm. of the eastern steppe so that wasn't fantastic but what it meant is that you had then the land and the, the army forces saying, well, we want material, mm. we want resources, we want stuff to be able to actually develop and fight what we're coming into opposition with, which is, of course, all of the, uh, you're getting all of the British uh, and American mm. you know, technological advances and weapon development and armor development that is being moved into their local area. And Japan's simply not ready for it on the land. Because, mm. so you look at their their way that they utilized um, tanks and vehicles and mobile armed warfare and predominantly where they fought it was jungle pacific terrain and they they're like mm. you don't there's no you don't fight a tiger you don't fight a panther because you outflank it you ignore it you go past it you you, mm. you know you just you don't worry about it maybe not worry about it is a bit of the wrong terminology, but you, you, you don't interact with it the same way. It's guerrilla warfare. It's 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 sabotaging mm. the supply lines so that you strand the troops, and, you, and it's it's a little bit more subtle in those respects. And that means, and, and as we get through the lists, we will very quickly see the things that the other armies have that people are attracted to because they're really good. Howling cows, for example, can use multiple rocket mm -hmm. launchers, useless in the jungles. 
like useless in a space yeah. where it's full of mountain ranges and full of things where it's like you know you can't make effective use of those batteries of weapons because you don't know where the, the enemy is typically to begin with you've got to go yeah. find them um you know there's other ways and if you're on an island it's like you've got to get it there and the rockets can shoot the whole length of the island and so the range is useless because they can't like it's you run into a whole mm. bunch of problems mm. um so we'll get into that but that's that's really the first part that you need to understand with the japanese forces is that there is some historical context which drives physically what they actually constructed and that means that they play very different in some respects to other nations they don't they can't just rely on um uh, things like well, I was going to say brain carriers, but we'll get to something equivalent mm. for that. But, um, but they, they, you know, jeeps running around with machine guns. Yes, that was something that they sort of did, but it was always very infantry focused. Their entire book mm -hmm. was driven of going, your infantry are going to be the best infantry in the game, bar none. Like just, they are going to yep. outrightly be better than everyone else from the get go. So it doesn't matter that you don't have all the tools that they would have, um, cause you're still going to be mm. typically better in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Um, and that probably yep. leads us into a perfect place to start, which is uh, the first army special war yeah. for Japan. Yep. Um, so um, go ahead and read the first one, and then we'll, we'll just take turns. Yep. And they'll, they'll work. So the first army special war is death before dishonor. Uh, and that is mm -hmm. the Japanese uh, soldiers and officers believe that a display of will through personal sacrifice uh, would influence the outcome and win the war for Japan. Uh, obviously, the, the world and history itself dictates otherwise, but mm -hmm. what it means from a game point of view is every unit in this list has the fanatic special rule. Uh, so yep. that's a generic special rule on page 70, but it applies to every unit in the army, including vehicles. And that's that's a mm. bit of a that's a bit of a tricky tricky piece that um, you know, oftentimes you can discount it, but we'll get into what that means in a second. In addition, sure. infantry and artillery units automatically pass morale checks for being assaulted by enemy tanks. So you can't even run these guys over. Normally with a fanatic unit, mm -hmm. it's like, well, you know, we're just going to get out of the way. We don't care. Um, but you could still attempt to run them over or still attempt to try and maneuver mm -hmm. them in some way. Um, whether it's they just go... We just said always oh, going to pass that check regardless. We don't. We don't care. We're just going. We're just going to get out of the way. Yeah. Um, now, artillery pieces still being destroyed as normal. That sort of makes sense. The tanks running over the actual gun piece. Your troops might be. Your crew might be fanatic, but the gun piece is metal. Uh, it's it's mm. going to get crushed. Where it makes a, you know, th that being fanatic in and of itself is massive. That that's a huge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's 100%. normally a three point per man upgrade on any unit mm -hmm. that wants to take it, and you're getting it for free across your entire yeah. army. Army wide, yeah, it's yeah. huge. So every man that you take, you're essentially getting an extra three points free, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. um, when you consider this rule, does it dictate your unit choices in what you would normally otherwise take in other forces? Like, is artillery less of an option? Um, it's actually, to, to be honest, it, like it, it absolutely does play a part for me to understand, you know, how yep. I want to play them and, and do I want to get the most out of that fanatic rule while still being flexible. Um, fanatics can also be a, a bit of a two-edged sword, which I'll talk about. Um, in terms of what I take it, you know, do I take extra artillery or do I leave artillery out and try and just get more men? There is a balancing yep. act with that. Um, your artillery mm -hmm. pieces are still fanatic, of course, as well. So unless you're, so if you've got a, a medium artillery howitzer, for example, medium howitzer artillery base. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things that the Japanese forces were able to do is add more crew members onto certain artillery weapons. Mm. So now you're adding more fanatic crew members onto that artillery piece. Like you, you you're not going to kill yeah, it. It's, it's not, not going to go anywhere. You're going to have to kill every single model. It makes them more yeah. survivable. Um, mm. When it comes to, you know, the disadvantage is because people know that you're fanatic, and because everyone knows that every model in your army is fanatic you will often find that instead of piecemeal attacks sort of here and there across your entire line, a good opponent is going to go, I'm going to obliterate that unit. I just need to, it's, yeah, it's okay. not going to take the 50-50, so I just need to obliterate it down to like one or two guys left and then I'll move on. Yeah. So your attrition rate per squad is actually a little bit higher than it would be in, a, in mm. a, what I would consider a normal game. 
where you're sort of you're yep. willing to trade a few more shots in that opening where it's like nah it's like every weapon I can is going to hit that squad until it's gone um, because ultimately that's how you yep. get to counter the, the fanatics because flamers don't work anymore <laughs> mm, mm. Um, all right well I mean this this very much uh, has synergy with the next rule the bonsai charge uh, which can be quite scary um, so if an infantry unit is ordered to run or charge closest enemy unit an order test to for that move is automatically passed as if the unit had rolled a double one what does the that final pass of it part of it mean if as if it rolled a double one does that remove pins also no nah, they did have to put that in the FAQ. yeah um so yeah. double ones typically would be insane courage and therefore you'd be entitled to yeah. a free rally order um that's that doesn't happen um what it does mm-hmm. mean however is insane courage is an, essentially an auto pass by snake eyes and mm-hmm. so irrespective of how many pins that unit has the situation any scenario modifier or whatever they don't care they will auto pass yeah they'll drop a pin and they'll immediately start taking that you of course do have to uh, chase the nearest and closest visible enemy yeah uh all units uh, must move directly towards the target unit and make contact if possible note if the unit ordered to run or charge in another direction but in that case we'll follow the normal rules of so charge has no effect okay yeah. um so i mean this this is really good for in particular with you're you're talking about focusing firing on a unit to stop it from doing mm-hmm. stuff but it's not it's not going to care about the pins no so if it's if it's in range it's going to work yeah yeah that's it and and it's very yeah. powerful like it, it's you know and it's very it's whenever an infantry unit is ordered to run uh and so you mm-hmm. know artillery doesn't take bonsai charge you can't bonsai charge with artillery yep. um which that's fine you probably don't want to yeah um yeah but but it's any infantry unit now so infantry unit is infantry squads hqs weapon teams Mm -hmm. um essentially anything that that forms um an infantry unit which pretty Mm -hmm. much is everything in the japanese list and that's where it's you've got two rules immediately that affect pretty much every unit that you're going to most of your force yeah 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 um oh there's more to this more, yep. uh yeah yeah sorry i missed that on the second page um okay right so uh order test for that move is automatically passes if the unit rolled a double one so is it this is about movement towards the enemy yeah rather than having the 12 inches even if you're basically almost pinned out yeah so it's it's actually yeah um, it, it essentially just explains and puts some caveats uh in that space um, I think mm-hmm. it's in our in our copy of, um, of the armies of at the moment. I think it's actually doubled up some of that wording. As yeah, scary, yeah, but kind of looks like but, it. But yep. essentially, it, all it's trying to do is put a limiter to go. You know, you, you can declare a bonsai charge at something that is twenty five inches across the board. That's that's legal, yep. provided it is the closest visible enemy unit at the yep. time. Um, and but if you're declaring bonsai, you are forced to run essentially that mm-hmm. full 12 inches directly towards that model you can't suddenly go yeah i'm going to start running and then take a left or you know no 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 yeah you have to yeah. commit to straight the line straight line as best as possible run towards that direction mm-hmm. so um that means that you can be led your units can be led around the battlefield if they are yeah um, forward deployers yeah, because of opponent. yeah you can yeah. try and pull them out of yeah. position deliberately make them visible and when they go i'm going to bonsai charge and you go that's great, but you you might be able to see my. You have to waste you it. You have to waste it over the forward deploy and then chase that instead. Yeah, maybe a spider or yep. something like or that, or something they can't yep. hurt. Like a, like you just just run an armored car, close top open car. Okay. Oh, interesting. Provided you don't. Yep. Provided you, there are no lunge mine, <laughs> explosive guys nearby, <laughs> yes. which we'll get to. We, which which is a very cool unit, and we'll get to. Yeah. Um, okay. So, cool. Run us through um, ambush. Yeah. Tactics. So that takes us to ambush tactics. Uh, ambush tactics is meant to represent how the Japanese troops um, fought their stratagems, how they set ambushes and sprung attacks on the enemy. Um, ambush, keyword. <laughs> um, yep. However, uh, what it means is that during your setup, any Japanese unit that starts the game in hidden 
So provided the mission allows you to start in hidden, and therefore you elect, and then you elect those units to start in hidden, you can actually then immediately give them an ambush as an order. So their order yeah, dice nice. won't come out of the bag. Uh, it'll just be on that unit automatically in ambush. Yep. Um, now that is in certain scenarios, um, that's quite controlling. That's that's a lot of board control mm-hmm. that you can actually front up very, very quickly. Um, it's, it's a rule which most people don't use because the things mm-hmm. that set up in forward deployment are like observers you want to give them the fire order you don't want to give them the whatever um it's like you could always put them on ambush and then flick it to a fire order um but but either way it's it's, yep. it's like you, you you want to be able to um you know keep those dice in the bag more often than not but a classic which we'll get to is if you've got a selector that allows you to take multiple snipers mm. for deployment put them on ambush it's like yeah very cool um and there are a few forward deploying units in japanese uh maybe not necessarily in this book uh i think new guinea has a few extra things as well well. but um there's still there's still a couple that are in here um which we can which we can talk to but um but yeah and then we've got the next one cool show you loyalty so this is about the political officers uh, the political officer doesn't confer a morale bonus to new by troops, but uh, new by presence, stealing nerve. If a green friendly unit within six uh, fail uh, rolls on the green or special roll, the player may re-roll. Okay, so you got green units, get a free re-roll if you're six inches away from the political officer. It's very, very similar yeah, that- to the Soviet uh, commissar. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, not much else to say about that one. Um, so we get straight into unit choices, I guess. Yep. So, and I think we'll follow this. We were going to follow the same format as before, where we, you know we'll skip over things that are the same or whatever. But um, immediately, mm-hmm. immediately in uh, the first selection, being the officer, yep. armies of Japan has a difference. Um, mm-hmm. Most armies throughout their different army books, um, for relevant different reasons, are able to take inexperienced officers. Yep. Japan cannot. Japan can't. They're just they're yep. just not allowed. So on the base rule book, I should say, on the base armies of sub. Yep. Um, they don't have inexperienced leaders. Um, and so they have they're automatically forced 50 to point be, tax. Yeah, fifty point tax. Yeah, yeah. Fifty point tax for the second lieutenant at its cheapest. Um, you can never get to that thirty five point barrier. Um, now the difference is from that point of view, um, you know, it's okay because he's already fanatic by default. So buy him as many mm-hmm. troops as you want. It won't matter. He's never gonna. He's never just gonna run away. Um, and yep. uh, and they can have swords, which gives them all like it's it's just rule of cool. It's like I've got I've got yeah all my yep. officers run around with katana blades because that's that's just cool. Yeah, cool from a Amazing. gameplay point of view, obviously. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the swords are free, which is even better. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Very cool. I mean, yeah, no other nation has swords. I mean, it even even mentions that you can get cavalry here. Yes. Uh, I guess you need a cavalry. No, just the captain or major may have a horse. That's right. So, so yeah, in this okay. in this instance, yep. um, so this is aided to by the FAQ, where if, if you have a cavalry unit in the army, you can put them yep. near any officer yep. on a horse. And that that is that all armies. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. As long as yeah. you can put I've a seen that unit pop in. up once or twice. Yeah. Um, it was sort of like a. Um, there's a few list builds where it's like you can literally build everything that's mounted except the officer who's on foot, and it just doesn't make sense. Mm. So the FAQ just yeah. covers that off. Yeah, they've added it in. But um, yeah, gotcha. But yeah, it, they they were actually one of the first army books that I looked at that I went, oh, I can actually put my higher generals and give them a higher mobility for five points. Um, you know, I have to commit. That is actually really useful. Well, Yes and no. You still have to commit the 110 yep. points on the captain plus the horse. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's 115. Yeah. Yeah. However, 115 points, um, a, 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 you know, an 18-inch run leadership bubble of 12, you, like that's, that's actually covering a lot of space on the board. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's, and it's like, oh, maybe. <laughs> Big enough games, maybe. Mm. Um, mm. One of our special events in our community, maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> Um, um, so, so uh, your leader, one man, two man. How do you kind of run him? So typically the in the lists that I've been running lately, I run them as one man. 
Uh, but I'll get into yep. that's that's a list decision that I've made rather than a standard. My standard is always normally yep. one man and an assistant. Um, the Japanese, I probably would go to three men because I don't care about getting shot. Yep. And so it's just it's if yep. I've got the points, it's an extra guy on the leader team to keep him alive. Um, but yeah, yep. it's extra sword, stock standard, <laughs> extra sword. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> do them up like cool. uh, yeah, a bunch of rodent or something. Um, then we've got awesome. uh, we move into the Japanese political officer. So again, it's it's a sen- yep. it's an Axis Japan version of what the um, commissar, commissar is would be. Soviet. Um, in fact, I'm mm-hmm. fairly sure that it's 15 points up to two men extra, at seven points apiece. Yeah. Um, and show your loyalty. It's pretty much exactly the same. Um, On par. Yeah. Yep. Um, medic is a medic, um, so we can just skip past that gentleman. Yep. Oh. Although, um, probably quite useful in an infantry-based army. Yes, especially when yeah. um, your infantry are so good. Like I think I think a Japanese medic yeah. is something which, like a 23 points regular for one, um, mm-hmm. that, that feels really cheap because most medics in my list that I've ever looked at, I've had to buy them veteran. And so 30 points is just, that's a lot. Yeah. But 23 points for a Japanese medic, um, it's an order dice plus. Yeah, not bad. Plus, every guy that you save is technically compounding that three point fanatic investment that you don't pay mm-hmm. in the first place. So, mm. you know, yeah, maybe some worth there. Um, obviously, you still need that six, and that's that's one of the reasons that so, medics are. So, typically, a medic can't attack, right? Correct. But with the bonsai charge, um, can it do the move order? Regardless of the pins, yes. So, so that there's, is cool. There's nothing. Um, the the trick with the bonsai order is, for a medic in particular, it's only going to be usable if he can't reach his target because he's not allowed to charge into combat. So, if you're actually yep. if you are actually okay. within twelve yeah. inches, you can't declare a bonsai. Yeah, it won't work. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you're thirteen, if you're, you're right. thirteen, you're okay. Uh, which. Look, yeah, yeah. you're still going to run the 12 and be one inch away, which is done. However, if yeah, that's, and, yeah. and, and he doesn't score objectives. And so it's not like that adds any value, but it does work. It gets him up there with the other yeah. squads. Yeah. If you were playing sectors, yeah. for example, and you get points for every unit that's crossed Ooh, into a neutral yeah. quarter or enemy quarter, yeah, yeah bonsai him in. <laughs> just, just bonsai him in. Yeah, why not? <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah observer... Observer seems pretty standard. Nothing fancy here. Yeah, although I might be inclined to actually taking one more than more often in a Japanese force than not, just because there's not all those really expensive selectors as we get later on yeah. with the unit choices. I, I think it, the Japanese force is one where you probably have points that you're willing to spend um, instead of yeah, um, yeah. Which I'll, I'll get to that again when I talk about the list that I've been running recently. Um, and then we move into infantry squads and teams. Um, so not a whole lot different in headquarters, but enough to maybe look twice. Um, and then we come to yeah, infantry squads and teams. So this is where it starts to get very same same. Um, the, yeah. the Japanese squads um, again. There's a history element here where the army navy versus no, army. navy versus army. Yeah. So so the army was typically you know army foot sluggers okay yeah we're the we're the army units and then the navy was like that's great but we don't trust you when we go and land on islands we're going to train up our mm. own form of infantry forces um which was then um what was imperial japanese um navy infantry squads which then ended mm-hmm. up um, incorporating um, special naval landing forces as a dedicated code. Yep. So they were almost approaching that sort of, I guess, structural idea as um, US Marines, where it, it's sort of like Marines mm. were, they're not army, they're under the Navy and they're, they're, they're dedicated amphibious assault units, um, ty- typically. Um, but they've also then got grenadiers um, and, and a mm-hmm. couple of other different, different flavors of the same thing, if that makes sense. So for example, the infantry squad, yep. um, one NCO, six men. So base squad size seven, That's you'll see that becomes yep. fairly typical throughout, um, up to eight extra models. And so, you know, you do yep. some quick math there and you go, that's 15 models. Um, and, and it's yeah. like, yeah, it is like, I think in fact, it's actually, it's, it's a lot of models, it's a lot of Japanese. Yes, you have to pay the points for it, but if you've ever had to face 
a unit of 15 yeah. that doesn't run away. It's it's mm. quite a challenge on the board. It's a lot of points. Definitely. But it's a challenge. And especially to to counter this in close combat, mm. you're putting up expensive veterans with expensive special rules to kind of counter your basic squad. Well, and, and what's crazy about it, like ha- having crunched a, a few numbers and averages and bits and pieces and trying to figure out what works for me, like I've run 15-man squads and yeah. they need to be run a certain way because you don't end up with as mm. many blobs of troops throughout your force. So you've got to be very careful about what you do with them yeah. because they do get focus fired and it's very hard to hide 15 men in a bolt action game. Yeah. So, um, yep. you know, and it's it takes you longer to get through terrain because you're a bigger, bigger mm-hmm. surface area that you're covering. Um, but the idea that you can have what is it, 13 rifle shots. Okay, maybe let's say 12 rifle shots if you give the NCO a submachine gun. But 12 rifle shots mm-hmm. and a light machine gun firing off um, all, all up. Mm. And you go, so it's, so I've got 15 models and I'm shooting anything outside of 12 inches, I'm shooting 16 shots. And if I'm in 12 inches, I'm shooting 18 shots. I'm like, that's, that's mm. a lot of conversion potential. Um, it's And if you charge me or if I charge you, your first rank of attacks, if you're only a 10-man or an 8-man unit, you're going to kill the extra guys. And I'm going to have 8 or 9 guys yeah. that are just going to strike back as if I was a fully strong unit. Like, what kind of madness is this? Yep. Um, mm. And then you add on the fact that they're fanatic. So you're going to have to yep. kill them all. And that's typically yep. where their value is, is you get them in and you just start punching stuff. You don't worry about the shooting. You just get the 15 men into yep. combat as quickly as possible and you just crunch your unit down and you crunch the next one down until that unit is spent. Um, yeah. But then when we move from that unit into... Oh, so you thought that was good? Well, there's a veteran type. <laughs> so they were all just regulars <laughs> and you can basically do... It's exactly the same options but at the veteran mm. level. So even you want if you want to make an even more expensive copy... And yeah. the one thing that I didn't mention is that you can automatically mount them up on bicycles as well. Yeah. I mean, this is this is very situational. Yeah, the board has to be made for it. But uh, you want to get these things into close combat and you can pay for it very cheaply. I mean, it's typically... It, it's going to be cheaper to buy bikes than any transport. Yes. And especially a transport that could host 15 dudes. Oh, yeah. Well, you, and and they're yeah. basically... There basically isn't one that can do 15. But, I mean, the bicycles play such a big part because that's how they ended up circumnavigating and, and causing problems when they did uh, an attack yep. Singapore. Um, and so... Yeah, I've seen that documentary yeah, as and well. and it's just... It's just like, <laughs> no one can traverse this terrain. It's like, give me that push bike. Um, Except bikes. Yeah, it's, just, no, it's, it's crazy. Um, yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, so, you know, even if you only get to use those bikes on the first turn, right, like... Mm. If for a 12-inch move, it's no different. They, they, they could just run that, and that's fine. Um, but the thing is, if you get to leverage a road at all and you're able to get up to 24 yeah. inches, that's positional advantage that you can just you yeah. can just do. Um, and you're, not, you're and, not paying a lot to do it. And more than comfortable to do it if you still got fanatics for, say, two points and a bike. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. It's, just, it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So w- once we move past, so that takes care of the what are typically the core Imperial Armies mm. of Japan army yeah. units. Um, before we get to the special yeah. ones, um, you were mentioning that you were fifteen is is a hard number to commit yes. to because you tend to lose a squad or two more that you'd like. Yeah. So where's your kind of in your headspace right now? Where's your kind of magic number? Just uh, based on the last couple of games. So. The, the last couple of games um, are a little bit weird. Uh, so so mm. I would actually quite happily run between eight to nine regulars um, with, mm. without without even hesitation. Um, I would do my, my typical IGA squad if I was going to buy one uh, from, from this selection would be I'd go regulars, I would take the seven that are the default part of it. Um, mm-hmm. And... There's a toss-up between whether you go the extra men to get to nine, so you basically buy um, mm-hmm. three three extra men, or whether you buy one extra man for an eight-man squad and buy the light machine gun. 
So then you've got a little mm -hmm. bit more of the reach out and the number of shots. Um, but eight's also yep. a very good compact number. Um, you lose yeah. you lose benefits of other things, but you gain like you still have that fanatic mm -hmm. bonus sitting over the top combined with bonsai yeah. charge. Eight rifleman, mm -hmm. like don't even bother giving me NCL or something. Doesn't need it. He can have a sword. Yeah. Um, okay, we well, technically can. And when you're doing that, um, yeah, but it's like, what, sorry, I missed that. When you're doing that, you're probably going for what the the five or six squad maximum. That's it. Yeah, that's exactly like right. all of the infantry slots yep. that you can fill. Yep. Just yeah. just because yep. you're, um, I'm trying to get that balance of maximizing infantry slots that I can take yep. with a unit that will actually yep. perform. Um, yeah, when we get to my list mm. example at the other end, which does something completely just, it's very situational, but it's very fun to play. Um, yeah. And it plays different to most other forces. Yeah, well, um, it, there's surprisingly a lot more thought that can go into the basic squads, particularly with the infantry size, the built-in fanatics, all the special rules and everything else. Is, yeah. It's not just take the maximum and, and go for that. Although that is a good option as well, there's there's a bit you can yeah, play with. It is, and and I think that's probably the the key takeaway is your first two infantry units of regulars or veterans. They may not get all the tools of what some of the other ones would, you know, with Panzerfaust or with assault rifles or with whatever. But they are very very good and stable, secure mm. choices to base your list around. Um, they are solid infantry. Um, then we get to my my favourite units. Um, yeah, like undoubtedly the mortar troops. Yeah, you know, we we call them mortar troops because that's typically where everyone thinks about them. Um, they're actually just grenadiers as their as their name. Mm -hmm. These also come in a regular and a veteran variety, mm -hmm. and these these guys are bonkers. So they start with one NCO mm -hmm. and four men, and so a regular fifty points. Cool, cool beans, five dudes. Add up to thirteen extra models. So you know what I was just talking about with fifteen. Yeah, about dudes. the whole fifteen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's worse with these Amplify guys that. because there's eighteen <laughs> of them. Like it's just, you, and and it's not like they're because these numbers are not unusual. Like partisan forces and and yep. some of the minor nation forces have some fairly big squads or inexperienced yep. units can get this size without too much of a hassle. Mm -hmm. But these are regular infantry. At eighteen, models, yeah, like, yeah, like and fanatic, um, you know, yeah, that's it's a massive blob of bodies on the table. It is, mm -hmm. it is huge, but that that yeah, at eighteen models strong, that squad very likely is going to survive the game, unless unless they are mm. absolutely hammered by the opponent. They're just yeah, eighteen models to get rid of when they're trying to hide as well. Obviously, if they're stuck in yeah, the open, but, then they're stuck in the open. You're probably going to get through them, but but. If those eighteen models, it's a are lot of models to well, kill. It's a lot of models. Um, it's almost two mm. whole squads in one squad um, that are quite happy. Yeah. Like you put them on the objective, they ain't moving. Like they'll just go down. Whatever six is ten. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to run away. So you literally have to kill us all. Um, then you get to their weapon loadouts. So NCO can take a submachine gun. Um, this is mm -hmm. the submachine gun. Ironically. You get to a couple of different units that start to open it up to other squad members, but virtually only the NCOs get submachine guns in most, yep. most Japanese units. Um, can't take a light machine gun. And that's something that a yep. lot of people go, oh, surely my grenadiers should be able to do this. No, that's mm. not why you take grenadiers. <laughs> yeah. You can take up to three light mortars. Um, yeah. For every light mortar you take, someone becomes a loader. It's 25 points each, so you're technically mm -hmm. slightly more expensive than what you would pay for a light mortar separately as an inexperienced one. Yep. But you're yep. getting it at regular. You're getting it inbuilt within a squad. Um, and you can you can just double down on that and take three of them if you really wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. But dispersing them with multiple squads is, is pretty good, good as well. Good. <laughs> And yeah. that touches on something in my list, which we'll, I'll talk about at the end. But, yeah. um, and again, you take that same profile, 18 dudes, one submachine gun, up to three light mm -hmm. mortars. And it should be noted that those three light mortars, because they are indirect fire weapons, they can target three separate units. Mm -hmm. And then the rifles can target a fourth. Yes. So you, you, your Another threat unit. factor yeah. on 18 dudes with three mortars is actually quite high. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
And even with all your mortars hitting something else, you still got a lot of shots going on to you, another you still target. Have like, yeah. You still have like yeah. 15 rifle shots going on the other unit. Yeah, it's yeah, just like... Yeah. It's yeah. like um, light mortars, they don't need a helper? They do need a loader, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, oh, they do need yeah. a loader. But, yeah, but, yeah. but it's also... The, the, even if the loader is killed for whatever reason... Um, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go into it now because it'll, it'll just make sense when I yeah, talk sure. so, so typically what happens is you set your loader up and you've got your weapon loader and you've got your actual light mortar and you might have obviously mm -hmm. two or three of those. Um, the first casualties that that unit takes, you kill the mortar loaders mm -hmm. because your rifles that are left in the unit are unaffected and your light mortar doesn't care about the minus one at all. And so he just okay. so, so okay. you essentially have three wounds so it's a tax for a light mortar yep. that doesn't have any function that's it that's it and so so what happens yeah right? okay so you lose those three loaders as the first casualties potentially if you got all three of them right you yeah, lose okay. those loaders and your your you lost no firepower because you're fanatic you don't care about the casualties because you can bonsai you're never going to get pinned and stuck and fail your orders and you turn around and you go, what what is that actually what does losing those three models actually cost me? Nothing. My offensive output Wounds. my offensive output yeah. is exactly the same. I can mm. still fire all the mortars and just they need sixes. Or the or they yep. range in if I'm standing still and you're standing still. If I fire all my rifles, well those loaders weren't firing their rifles, so I've I've literally lost no shots. That means that you need to kill four models before you have any impact on that that squad mm. like like that's just there's no that other squad insane. in the game where you can do that yeah where you kill four dudes and then you have impact on the offensive capability that just doesn't exist mm -hmm. um it might exist in something that i've overlooked but i don't i don't think it yeah well not not in standard infantry choices standard armies None and come to yeah mind. again we're now you pay for the um, privilege of doing this. This is like another body armor sure. comparison, right? Like you pay the, for, for that privilege, mm. but it's quite effective when used well. Um, mm. And of course, as I was saying, you can also get it in the veteran variety. If you know, if being yep. hard to kill wasn't yep. enough, um, <laughs> you can do it as a veteran. Um, yeah. So I guess the decision is how many of these light mortars do you want in your list, and how many do you want dispersed within individual squads or or bulked up and even if you want to um, use this as a tactic right so this because it forces your play style a certain amount if you want to get those the use mm. out of those mortars um but we'll move on and we'll come back to that um, mm -hmm. in a moment yep um so we've got the navy troops next. yeah this is where we hit the navy troops um where they've they've now become the uh, special naval landing force, which is that com sort of combined, yeah. we you know, navy wants their own infantry that they can use in amphibious assaults, um, and they actually basically because the navy had priority on a lot of things politically, they pretty much could take whoever they wanted, the best of the best, and put them into the, the mm. naval force. Um, and so, it's it's not that necessarily they weren't necessarily commando esque style level. Mm -hmm. they did operate mm -hmm. a little bit like that but these guys were like if they were coming against you it's like they weren't going to run away they they absolutely could be trusted mm. to get the objectives done um they they were not uh yeah they they were not inexperienced by any stretch of the imagination mm -hmm. very very capable these are the assault troops very capable yeah. um now part of these as we get into the rest of um the other units is we now get into um, uh, what are known as dual weapon squads. Um, there's a footnote of mm -hmm. those. And typically what happens is in the, the structure of the army changed because they were trying to consolidate and create more effective attacking um, units and threats. So dual weapon platoons were then started to be picked up. And so that was taking essentially one type of formation and then putting other pieces into that um, to try and make mm -hmm. it a bit more um, robust. Versus yeah. Yeah. Which means that you can yeah. then, in your regular squads, if you have grenadiers in your force, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it essentially allows you to upgrade your other infantry squads to take light mortars in their squads. <laughs> oh. Most people don't do it because it becomes very cost prohibitive yeah. very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. But what you essentially are then able to do is turn all your regular infantry squads 
into smaller grenadier squads with a light machine gun and a light mortar. Mm. And 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 you just it it, it like Gorshin complains about rifle grenades, and this is sort of one of the reasons, <laughs> anecdotally probably why, is because Japan can why basically they go, don't. I'm just going to do it, and I'm just going to put light yeah. orders everywhere. Um, mm. And what can you do about it? Not much. Um, play a, play yeah. a smaller point limit so that they're not allowed to do it is probably the best, <laughs> the best thing. Um, anyway, so moving forward to the special, le- <coughs> special naval landing force. Um, yep. These guys have to be veteran. Um, it's one NCO and four mm-hmm. men. They can only take up to an extra seven, which is still 12 mm-hmm. models. It's like that's 12 fanatic models. Um, this time the NCO and one other person can take a submachine gun. It's the first time. Ooh, we got two. It's the first time <laughs> that one of the units you encounter is actually able to get more than one submachine gun. Uh, you can still take the, uh, the light machine gun. And then it's like, what else have we got? What else makes them special? What special rules have they got? None at all. Um, mm. It's just a it's just a compact veteran squad um, with a couple of extra submachine guns. So from a list building point of view, I'm not surprised that we don't see many of these as a competitive level because yep. there's not a lot of meat on the bones to actually dig under it. Mm. But of course, they... Um, seeing how effective it was within the army, the special naval landing force went, grenadiers, well, we've got a bunch of people trained to be grenadiers already that we poached from the army, so, um, well, let's just make them a grenadier squad. So if you want yep. veteran uh, grenadiers from special naval landing force, you can have that flavor too. Um, same yep. options as uh, the previous one, with the exception of that one extra submachine gun. And this is where, historically the navy is leveraging to go well we've got a lot of close quarter fighting because we hit the beach well uh, we want submachine yeah, guns give us more doesn't get them, we yeah. want them and so they were trying to put them yeah. in hmm. then we start moving into a few other different types of units um, and these ones like we've sort of passed all the standard stuff and now they're just these mm-hmm. are thematic ones that pop up tied to the theater selectors and how japan and their war that they were fighting how it essentially developed and the different types of units that were created due to desperation is essentially the way that mm. this tracks. The further along you go, the more desperate they become, the different unit types that we get. Yeah. So we're not quite at that point, at that break point just yet. Um, the first one is we actually have the I, the Imperial Army of Japan coming back now. They actually have the yep. Taishin uh, Shudan. I've probably butchered that, I apologize. Paratrooper sure, squad. the Paris. <coughs> And um, these are Japanese paratroopers. Um, Interestingly enough, the paratroopers were not an army-only component, uh, which we'll see in a second. They essentially, like in all things, um, army and navy were competing. Uh, They they had a couple of drops, and they had some really Mm -hmm. bad casualties. Um, And so it was sort of the... The one way that like they were trying to get them in and they were like if this works it gets the imperial army of japan back in high esteem allows us to maybe mm-hmm. leverage things a little bit more politically but it was very very like most paratroopers things when they get started very costly in equipment and lives and, yeah. and the benefit the realization of the benefit wasn't necessarily what was forecast so mm-hmm. veteran infantry five guys all equipped with rifles standard can go up to an extra five for the 12. Um, Then if you take them as the special naval landing force instead, you can go up to an extra Mm -hmm. seven. And so there's a slight Mm -hmm. bigger force on the special naval landing force um, Navy side again. Mm -hmm. Now three guys can have a submachine gun, which is nice. Um, Light machine gun. And then again, nothing. So no, no stubborn on paratroopers for obvious reasons. If you were fanatic yep, and stubborn, that would be re- just, I don't want to think about yeah. it. Um, stubborn is also a little bit undone by the fact that you can bonsai charge. Like those rules actually mm-hmm. conflict a little bit. Um, but yeah, a fairly solid choice. But yeah, not a lot of development went into that squad afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we move to the Island Warfare Squad. Now, this was a late... Mm-hmm. So at the late war, this is where everybody is now talking um, 
uh, essentially the wars starting to wrap up in this Pacific. America's mobilized, they're coming across, they're starting to hit the different islands. Japan adopts a defensive strategy for their, for their land forces. Um, uh, or more specifically, they do defensive strategy for their islands whilst they pushed on yep. land um, to try and create um, a drive into China. Um, regular infantry and NCO and mm-hmm. three men. It's one of the only sort of infantry section squads that I've ever seen that is only four man minimum. That has four man. Yep. Yeah. Very, yeah. very interesting um, space. Very limited options. Uh, and they actually, mm-hmm. they only allow up to an extra four men. So these guys are max squad size at eight. Um, you can't yep. actually make these guys bigger than that. Um, they're a thematic choice because they have absolutely no special rules. Um, mm-hmm. And they are often <laughs> they are often outshone by the very next entry, which I'll let you do the honors of reading, <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> oh, gee. The Bamboo Spear Fighters. So well known across all discussion places, all bolt action. Um, people fear the bamboo spearmen, and that's in particular with all of the special rules that we've already mentioned. Yeah. Um, and now you can get fifteen dudes. Your dudes cost five points each, so you're making quite big squads for an army that's already great at, at close combat. Yeah. Uh, and you're not really paying anything for it. I mean, they're inexperienced, so you're paying two points less per dude for a guy who can't shoot. But he's got a really pointy stick. Yes, definitely. Um, they're green? Yeah. Okay, that's good. So, well, yeah, you might want to sneak in that political <laughs> officer if you can. Is it good that they're green, though? Think about it. So let's say they go through their green test, okay. right? Let's say they yeah. fail their green test. So that that yeah. either means that you're going to um, you're going to either stay in experience, you're going to level up mm-hmm. and become regular. That's horrifying. Yep. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> or they're going to run away and go down and, and essentially be be pinned for the turn. Mm-hmm. Bonsai under like your worst result is that they run away or go down. Right. Bonsai, bonsai yep. reverts that and makes that a null problem. Mm. So your only real drawback is if they stay inexperienced. Which they already they're already, are. They're already experienced. <laughs> you bought them that way. <laughs> and they're still better because yeah. they have five points each. Um, so the fear, like I have not played them. And the fear that people that I see and whatever is people saying, hey, there's 100 models on this table and whatever else. Um, but I'd be interested to see how they play in, in small amounts because... I, I've been using a few units just to, to bulk up my dice count in my German list at the moment. Yeah. And I, I, I like having a, a squad of Shirkers or a 20-point LMG team. Um, it's it's actually quite useful. I, I wouldn't mind trying these guys in the five-man variant or just even slightly above that. Um, I think there's... They're, they're an expensive model to get, though, because they're all metals. <laughs> I've seen a lot um, of different conversions, a lot of 3D resin prints. Um, uh, I've seen lots of different things because the metal models are cool, but they are obviously expensive. I think there's only five in a pack as well. I think it's a small blister. Yeah, so you'd be duplicating um, sculpts yeah. all over the place if you went hard on these. Um, um, but, but I mean, all that being said, um, the theatre selectors, for example, in this book, right at the very mm. end, they when they first get introduced there is zero to one limited choice and then okay. for every selector after that particular one they become a zero to two choice where they can where they've mm-hmm. picked it up or whatever so from a theater selector point of view they've actually limited them because they they recognize yeah. that that more than two of these is probably um treading mm-hmm. the the grounds of friendship and and, uh, and a precipice of just we don't talk to that person anymore um but the the reality is your idea for example of i just want to get a cheap order dice in and 25 points feels like yeah. a sensible investment to just put a unit on the yeah. board um that's also completely viable for for the japanese mm. player. completely viable and if people give you a hard time for running five bamboo spearmen your opponent needs to rethink how they're mm-hmm. taking on your list because five inexperienced guys 
Yes, they're fanatic. Yes, they're spearmen. Yes, they're, they're green mm-hmm. and all that other stuff. It's five dudes. Like, that's it. Yeah. If, if you yeah. can't deal with yeah. one unit of five dudes or even two units of five dudes, you, you yeah. don't understand how to play bolt action at that point. If mm. that, if it, that's, you shouldn't be afraid of yeah. models in two units of five. That just shouldn't happen. I, I, could, I could see these being a decent threat at the low model count, oh, yes. though. Um, especially when we get later, because like we've got the anti-tank um, slot dudes that are running with the with the mine yeah, coming soon. Uh, <laughs> bundling them with this, with your actual deadly squads that have mortars and things. There are some cool options here. And and this this is where like on the surface, because we're we're almost through the the um, the, yeah. the unit selections and stuff, but but. On the surface, it looks like there's nothing there. I can't get a full squad mm. of submachine guns. It doesn't exist. I can't yeah. get anything yeah. with assault rifles or semi-automatic um, BAR assault weapons or anything. It doesn't exist. There are no Panzerfausts. Mm. There are no um, what's what's uh, there's no there's no bazooka or Panzerschreck equivalent. Mm. Like that that they actually don't have a launcher equivalent. Um, so it's like what what's the deal? And it's like the deal is these guys fought in the jungle those things were yeah. not the way that you dealt with the threats because the threats never got that big. Mm. It's like, you know, it, it, it's, it was a lot more of infantry versus infantry. Um, so the battle that I just fought with my dad, for example, um, and I, you know, I screenshot mm-hmm. your uh, shot of what that board looked like. That was shocking. Vehicles had nowhere mm. to go on that at all. Um, yeah. And it was all down to yeah. infantry. Anyway, move us on from Bamboo Scorpio Squad. Yep. Uh, so we've got Militia, Inexperienced Squad, 35 points, 5 <coughs> dudes, can bring another 10, 7 points each, green. Yeah, I, I like that. Yep. I mean, equivalent to a Soviet in, Inexperienced Squad. Obviously, you can take a few more dudes. Just a few. Uh, and that, that's, that's really, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think Soviets can take 12. Yeah, um, right yeah which is good, but... Yeah, I mean, there's just not many nations that can take above 12. 12 seems like a luxury for a German player. Um, Even for... And I, I, I've moved I've moved to eight for yeah. the most part, for most of what I do. And, like, you you um, imagine your eight guys suddenly being swarmed by 14 that are fanatic, and you just, yeah, like, uh, yeah. I don't... You can't I do anything know. about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, cool. So we've got the militia... And then we move on to some of our standard options. Yep. So we've got an MMG. Yep, MMG. Nothing special nothing there. Stocks. I will note there's no but, heavy machine gun man pack option at yep. all. Um, so it's just a medium machine gun. Um, um, but yeah, I might actually consider taking it because there's not like, yeah, there are some LMGs scattered throughout, but I guess range is, is, a, yes. is a problem and doing stuff while you're trying to move to large blobs of infantry around yep. wouldn't be... Wouldn't be uh, all that bad to put throw a pin or two out. Yep. Um, anti-tank rifle team. Um, yeah, standard of, of what you'd normally have. Uh, but yeah, we get we get the fancy one here, the suicide mm. AT team. So there there is a fourteen uh, points for inexperience. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah. So the suicide anti-tank team. So these these are typically the lunge mine guys, the ones with magnetic mines. Yep. that um, The sort of conical yep. shapes with points on the end. And when you look at the models, um, basically. It, shape charge that's on a bamboo stick and they ran at the tank and shoved it in sometimes they would survive yeah most of the time they would not um so mm. people go oh why are you getting veteran they're going bang they go bang in the game in real life they actually sort of the long pole was so they could yeah they would have they would have chucked it and ran side. went yeah. away yeah um yeah yeah and and, and i'm sure <laughs> they're doing that within the game as well for the most yeah, for part the most they part. might be just um, yeah, yeah. Well, they've got no, they've got no function after so that. I love the the thing that I yeah. love most about this. First of all, the, the one man, no assistance, um, low points cost. That's brilliant. The kamikaze rule mm. just describes how they explode when they charge a vehicle. Importantly, mm-hmm. if they charge an infantry model, they do not explode. They fight as a normal infantry mm-hmm. model. A normal. Um, yeah. However, I love the weapon line. The weapon lines one lunge mine or an artillery shell, or a satchel charge, <laughs> or a magnetic mine, or something similar. Like, it's, it's any heavy audience that you could carry. Um, like, it's just, 
It's just hilarious. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just make it explode. You could have just said so, improvised plot- explosion and that would have been sufficient, you know? <laughs> Um, plus eight pen value on yeah. this thing. That's that's quite fierce. I mean, uh, what what's what's a Panzerfaust six? Yeah, a bazooka's six. A Piat is five. Mm. And 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 it's uh, and and like those things are at range. And so when they're firing at long range, yep. some of them, not all of them, but some of them drop their modifier as well. This is just straight eight pen. No yep. other modifiers. Just bam. And and guaranteed if you're in range. Pretty much. You're not rolling no, for it's it. It's just, yeah, yeah. You yeah, get help, and yeah. as long as you range, as long as you're in range to get the the charge off, then you roll straight for penetration. Like it's it's, it's, yep. It, it's why they're popular as well. Is because they are so, mm, um, mm. yeah, they, they, they're quite good. And what makes them particularly good, Jacob? <laughs> yeah, forward observe. I mean, they're already halfway up the board on deployment. Yeah. Um, and they also have the extra selection, so you can so similar to some yeah, of the other three ones. Three for one. Used, three for one. Importantly, you can actually do the three for one in addition to the anti tank rifle team. And the reason that that mm-hmm. happens is because people just taking the three anti tank lunge mine guys, they might all mm-hmm. like hit, blow up, and not do anything, and then all of a sudden there's no anti tank, and so they still leave you the ability to take the anti tank rifle team as well. That's really cool. Just, just so if you have a worst case scenario moment, you still have something mm. that can, you know, it might be pea shooter against, um, you know, some of the things that you'll face. But, sure. But hey, it's better than nothing. A, a rifle with a pen, pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Um, nice. Moving into flamethrower team, which is stock standard. Um, the sniper team, yep. which is stock standard. The theater mm-hmm. books um, provide some other options in this space, but we won't cover them yeah. here. Um, then you actually cool. get a light mortar team in and of itself, um, mm-hmm. which is actually what you would expect. <laughs> if you didn't have if enough. You didn't have enough. <laughs> um, but it, it is yeah. actually what you would expect to see it as. Um, same with the medium yep. mortar. Uh, and mm-hmm. Even with the, like, the heavy mortar is the same. Um, just looking over mm-hmm. the profiling. Yeah, so heavy, the heavy 2D6 is yeah. the previous yeah. V1 stuff. Um, yeah, same point, point, yep. price point for every other nation. Yep. Uh, I, I might be inclined to take in a heavy just for yeah. the extra pen. And you're gonna, you're probably gonna have the points, right? That's the thing. Like, and yeah. don't think, like you take the heavy mortar with the four crew. It's like it's it's still fanatic. And like, so if your mm. opponent wants to take it out, it's like, well, you're gonna you're gonna have to kill them all because I'm not gonna run away. Yeah. And because it's a mortar, I'm like, I don't care about modifiers. I'm just gonna start ranging in. Like, so you're gonna have to yeah. kill it. Um, and then you hide it, of course. Mm. Um, mm. And then we move into infantry guns and howitzers. Now, the listings become, from this point forward, the listings have a lot of different names, but actually very small weapon selection when you look at the actual weapon does. Yep. So, for example, we've got a three-man team on a light howitzer, which, are, which has a light HE yep. shell. So it actually has a smaller mm-hmm. HE rating than normal. Um, mm, okay, but you're paying slightly, paying slightly less for it. Less. Then you have a yeah. full light howitzer. Uh, then yep. you have a light howitzer. Then, like, it's it's essentially <laughs> it's got one extra crew, so you're paying for a little yeah, extra okay. crew. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, for another yep. wound. You're paying for yep. another wound, which, because you're fanatic, those things do count. Um, but the profile mm. is actually still a light howitzer. No versatile, mm-hmm. no nothing like that. Um, yeah, and you can add these extra loaders as well. Yes. Yeah, and, and that's yeah, so the, okay. the, the extra yeah. loaders is, is um, something quite unique that I, I haven't seen in any other armies um, or any other nation, actually, even the minor ones, um, where you can add extra crew members to your artillery pieces. And at first, you're like, why would you bother? But you're fanatic. Mm. Like, that's actually yeah. a massive yeah. advantage. Like, if you take a light howitzer with four men on it, that's already one more than anybody else. Mm. You're not paying many mm. points more to put it on. And then you got to buy... Yeah two loaders but look at the cost plus five the points five points each so it's not even a full yeah, yeah. 10 point for a man yeah 10 men you get, you're, you're yeah, getting two yeah. for one and yeah. you've got fanatic on top and it's like so suddenly i've got a six mm-hmm. man light howitzer team i'm mm-hmm. gonna fire this all game all yeah game. yeah and they 
And these are very much staples <laughs> in most armies. Giving them extra wounds for not all that much points yeah. is, is a really good yeah. option, especially when you're advancing everything straight <laughs> forward as much They're as possible They're not going to be shooting elsewhere. at your guns, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's very yeah. good. Um, the 105 field yep. gun, um, so that's that's a mm -hmm. medium howitzer, which typically has a With crew six of four uh, or three, and this starts yeah. with a crew of six. Like... Yeah, and, and and for how many points at regular? Eighty-five. Yeah, eighty-five. Six. So what's a medium normally? Medium. Like sixty-five, it's, it's seventy, like, something like that. It's like yeah. medium howitzer, is not that you know. It's like maybe sort of sixty-ish, yeah. seventy-ish points is where I would have put it normally. Yeah. And it's like for only yeah. eighty-five points, I get six fanatic crew. Yeah. Like, wow. Like it's just that's amazing. Now the one thing. The one thing that I would note is obviously um, as you move up the scale towards making them veteran, that becomes quite point heavy very quickly. Like if you want to make mm -hmm. a 105 field gun as a veteran, it is 100 points, 102 points. Um, but, you know, it's 102 yeah, but fanatic veterans that now are never leaving that gun. <laughs> and the comparison to what you have in other armies... Yes. To get a seven point crew flak eighty eight, what's that like a hundred and eighty points or something crazy like that? I'm sure the gun so is a bit it's, scarier, but, but sure, it's but not fanatic. The survivability, yeah, it's not yeah. fanatic. <laughs> yeah, that 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 that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, at at a glance, not not reading into this and, and looking at the extra men that you can get in there, you, you just gloss yeah, over you go, why would I? it's what all the other armies I, have as why well, would I right? Why more loaders? That's pointless. Why? Uh, maybe yeah. not. Um, yeah. Type 4 Heavy Howitzer is the next one off the rank, um, which is moving mm. towards your larger gun profiles. It actually, it's actually caps out their, um, their gun profiling. So, again, five men, 115 yep. points, Heavy howitzer, oh, and you can I'd, add. Three. Oh, I pay the extra fifteen points for three like, more dudes. Like, I'm going to pay fifteen <laughs> extra points and the spotter. I'll make it twenty-five extra points, um, and then you go sure. like, for like a hundred. <laughs> I'll take one light mortar out. Yeah, yeah, and it's like one hundred and forty <laughs> points, and I have a heavy howitzer with a spotter and eight crew that are all for now. That is amazing. I'm like, why wouldn't you? Well. The reason that you typically don't is because <laughs> at this point you are starting to encroach on the spend of points and yeah. where they go. But I mean, yeah. I mean, for 140 yeah. points, it's that's really hard to. to I like it's that. It's really hard to go yeah. past. Um, then you move into so got some AA, AA guns. guns. Yep. So you got a regular 20 mil cannon, which this is fairly typical. One one yep. auto cannon. Yeah. Um, also, as you move out of the howitzer space you start dropping mm. off those additional crew members. So now you're back to regular yeah, okay. allocations of crew. Yeah. But this is tough because you might need an anti-tank gun. Strangely enough, yes, you may, because yeah. you don't actually have a lot of other things that are running around. Um, okay. uh, well, yeah, actually, that's not true. You do have a lot of things running around. You don't have a lot running, of other big yes. guns. Um, so... The, the, the ability to upgrade the Type 2 um, to a twin AA for plus 30 points mm -hmm. makes it about an 80-point AA gun and mm. you get four light automatic shots from the cannon. That's not horrid. It's four HE, yeah. four anti-tank profile yeah. shots at, you know, okay, sure, it's only like plus two or whatever, but it's it's yep. still, yep. that's still four shots as opposed yeah. to one single HE shot and one single mm. um, mm. anti-tank shot. And then again. Yeah, this... This is tough to choose. It's yeah, it's hard. But then again, you've got good decisions all around, so you make you can't so. necessarily make a wrong choice. Yeah, I think I think um, yeah, I think you actually have a much like we were talking about. Oh, the selections aren't that great, but I don't actually think yeah. that it's the selections aren't that great. I think that because of the way that you need to play this army, or sorry, some of the ways that you can play mm. this army, you use your tools differently. And you have to have a different mindset mm. of how you're playing with it. So, you know, light any tank gun for the 37 mil, that's fairly standard. 47 mil is the yep. medium, that's fairly standard. Um, moving on through, oh, wait, no, no, that's all the anti tank guns. We don't that, have heavy at get. all. We don't get nothing at all. <laughs> okay, I guess we stop at medium then. Yeah. Yeah. And so yep. then you go, well, if I don't have anti tank guns, and yes, I've got my anti tank suicide squads, so that's fine. I know I can use them. Mm -hmm. But if mm -hmm. I don't have those, 
any tank guns. I'm like, I guess I have to rely on my vehicles. This is where most people get unstuck with Japan, where they go, ah, oh, no, I can't. Oh, I can't. wait. <laughs> because, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get into some light tanks, which, yeah, uh, on face value, on a, on, a, on a novice player, you might not be interested in, but, uh, yeah, they can do some work. But when I was collecting uh, Japanese earlier on, this is way before 3D printing was a thing, uh, a lot of these um, artillery pieces don't exist as a model yeah. from Warlord. So you do need to go looking. Um, there are a few alt manufacturers that do stuff. You really need to just scour the net. Um, a, lot of, a lot of metals that are produced elsewhere. Uh, but the standard infantry boxes are pretty good because they have the lunge mines in them. They've got light mortars. Yeah. They've got pretty much everything you're going to need. Um, and I think the uh, naval infantry boxes just head swaps anyway. Yeah, pretty much. Um, there's, but yeah, these... there's a couple. There's a couple of individual sculpts you can get if you're getting the um, the metal special. The metal sculpts. boxes. Yeah, um, yeah, and yeah. There's a few yeah. different, and and that's purely aesthetics at that point. Um, which yeah, I actually really like a lot of their models for the range. Um, yeah, the they Japanese, do look cool. They look really good. Um, the yeah. jungle warfare kit yeah, is I'm... good as well. Unfortunately, the plastic boxes are V1 boxes, yeah. so you got like separated arms and, and all that kind of stuff. I would love it if um, this got revisited by like a War Games Atlantic or something like that. And I'm guessing maybe maybe Warlord Resin, if if I'm looking at your face. The, I mean, they'll, they'll do. I expect Warlord to do all their weapon teams as they swap them out for metal because they yeah. already said they're going to swap yeah. out the metal for the resin. Um, the new resin looks impressive. Um, I'm yet to actually get yeah. my hands on it, but. Um, when I mm. purchase something for it to get it through, yeah, um, yeah, I'm quite, for, first it looks, time. All the reviews I've seen have actually been quite surprising, quite positive. Yeah, because um, everyone's used to the fibrous sort of um, uh, CO cast stuff. That's like people are like, oh no, it's it take it or leave it. I don't want it at all. Leave me. Like, don't touch my metals. Just let it go. Which, yeah, on yeah. some cases I understand. However, um, mm. if they've worked with the formula of the resin to get it so that it isn't that fibrous um, so when you file it and when you go to cut it and things like that, it's I'm like, that's that's good. That that was their biggest drawback was that it was it was a bit of a shocker to try to clean up. And so when you couldn't get a nice mold mm. and then you couldn't clean it up, it's like, well, why did I spend the money on this? Um, yeah. Side note. Um, yeah, well, it, it is, as soon as e any one of us gets one of these models, we'll, we'll, we'll give you our thoughts. Yep. Um, but yeah, and uh, with the model range, again, <clears throat> some of the tanks are not available direct through Warlord. Yep. But, you know, 3D printing is, is, is a thing these days. You'll Absolutely. be able to find everything. Yep. So um, we'll, we'll quickly have a look through um, these. One, one of the things that is typical also in the Soviet book is a lot of these initial early tanks you cannot get them veteran. They they are inexperienced mm -hmm. or regular only. Um, and so yep. we'll go through the assault guns and tank destroyers because there's only three of them. Three Perfect. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> Two whole categories of vehicle, three choices. So, you know, let, let's classify a type one tank destroyer, which has a 75 mil gun. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. okay, so 124 of these manufactured yes. Um, that's the other thing okay. to pay attention um, of as well is the production yeah. numbers in, um, so we got 124 um, forward facing medium anti tank gun so it's not even turret mounted yeah um, so it's just um, yeah you know, locked in place open topped um, however yeah as you mm. say it does have the versatile rule so it can fire as a light howitzer mm. that because you don't have to pay for it is awesome yeah, really yeah, awesome. that is already cool. Um, and this this might be your your choice instead of throwing in a medium AT yes. gun. Correct. And actually, just taking another just artillery taking another piece artillery there. Basically. Yeah, and then this is versatile as yeah. it is. Um, Very cool. So that that I actually <laughs> really nice for points. One hundred and twenty yeah. points at regular. I I, I genuinely yeah. I'm like that's actually really good. Um, and this is where mm. the fanatic thing comes in. So your, your vehicle's being fanatic as well, which is like a little bit mind warping to get your head around. But essentially what it means is in virtually all instances, 
fanatic on a vehicle means absolutely zero. So when you're assaulted in combat, it means nothing. You only got one model. When you're um, being shot at by a majority of weaponry, means absolutely nothing. You're one model if you yep. get hurt. When you're hit by a flamethrower, however, if you survive oh. the flamethrower attack, you do not have yep. to take the flame to test. You're immune. Yeah, you're okay. Auto -pass. Technically, you take the test, but you're auto pass on double one. Yeah. yeah okay wow that is yeah. something yeah yeah um, now that that okay. so that all the japanese vehicles have that in their little back pocket yeah including the trucks which look if you if you mess up killing a truck with a flame yeah story, and i i don't need to take the test it's like you deserve the humiliation that you feel no no that's wrong that's wrong mm -hmm. If you have the unfortunate <laughs> instance of not killing a truck, um, don't tell them to take the flamer test as well because mm -hmm. because it won't happen. Um, they're just not going to do it. Yep. Um, Very cool. The Ho Ni Type 3 tank nee. destroyer. Um, mm -hmm. 30 to 40 made, 44 to 45. Yep. So this is late war. Yep. Not, uh, so a late war gun is a medium AT. Case cool. mounted. But it is. Eight plus a light tank. Yep, eight plus light tank. Um, you lose the open top. I mean, for 140 pound, uh, 140 points. I'm kind of like, yeah. I'm getting if I'm only getting a medium anti tank gun and slightly better on the armor. Um, that's nice, but is open top yep. and firing as a light howitzer better for 20 points less? Yes, like, you know it is definitely. Yeah, it's got to be right. Yeah, yeah. And then we get to yeah. one of the. Uh, are you right? Do you need to check anything? No, no, I can, I can, I can see this. <laughs> um, uh, hurrah! Assault yes. gun, twenty-five made during the defense of the Philippines in forty-five. I think they must have just kit bashed this thing together during that battle. This is um, a, um, so. You, you know how everyone goes. Oh, there were there were only you know so many. Um, Puma tanks or Puma armored cars around us. Blah blah blah. They shouldn't have been yeah, in every army. Yeah. <laughs> That's this is like a hundred of them. This is yeah. This, this is basically <laughs> what the the Japanese ho row is, right? So it's like we built built yeah. twenty five. So so what mm -hmm. I want you to focus on is there is built. <laughs> that doesn't mean that they all fought. <laughs> it went yeah. to battle. <laughs> um, so one hundred and fifty five <laughs> points for regular for a forward facing heavy howitzer. Um, Impossible. Can't find it anywhere else. I mean, definitely can't. A heavy howitzer. No I mean, it's typically. I mean, it's typically on a armor nine vehicle. That's right. So, so you're already, obviously you're paying already, more yeah, for that. You're dropping that. And typically, most of those heavy howitzers are also going to be enclosed rather than open top. So, so you mm. do you do have two massive drawbacks. One, you're you're just slightly higher sure. than paper thin, and you're open top, so you're susceptible to being pinned down yeah. and stuff. The difference is you're only paying 155 points, or if you want to be a real jerk and higher inexperienced, 124. Yeah. Yeah. One, you're going to have mean, the range, so there's no point moving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're going to go 50, yeah, I guess 50 so. inexperienced after setting up, and all you do is, I want protection. Oh. Okay, we'll put 15 Japanese troops in front of it. There you go. There's your protection. Look. If I if, if I was building a list, not looking at the rest, I would roll a dice. <coughs> one to three, I'm going for the type one. Four to six, I'm going for the type four. I mean, they're both amazing. They're, they're great. These, these 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 are awesome. Look, you know what? You know what's crazy though uh, is like. So let's look at. Okay, so the type one we talked about was good value, and it's 120 points. For yeah. Literally 35 points more. On the I same know. chassis, you take out the medium anti tank gun and you put in a heavy howitzer. It's amazing. I mean, my Russians are jealous. Like genuinely, I I thought I had everything I ever wanted in my Soviet force, and I look at that and I go, no. But yeah, like the bigger nations, you're looking at like almost three hundred points for a heavy howitzer in a vehicle that can move. You can probably pick Obviously up Obviously they have the armor. Yeah, but you can probably between two hundred to three hundred is where I would expect those normally to come in. But yeah. you're right, it's normally yeah. on like an armor nine vehicle. And it's like Yeah. It's just different. But um Which feels weak in itself as well. Yeah. 
So yeah, uh, like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to pay half. <laughs> most old action <laughs> players are, um, and if you set yourself up right with it, where you have a good, if you're covered on a particular angle and you just lock down an area of the board, that's 155 points well spent. Mm. Because that's all you have to do is yeah, just lock definitely. down an area of the board. You don't even have to aggressively use it for it to make its points back. Yeah, it only has to hold yeah. like two or three squads, and you're up on point point ratios. Like it's it's mm. crazy. Um, oh. Then we move into the hard go. Now this was um, yeah this was their primary infantry tank. Um, mm-hmm. And remembering what we were talking about earlier with the history and the backwards and forwards, the the, the Japanese armored forces were essentially non-existent. The, all the armored mm. fighting vehicles were there to support the infantry in jungle fighting. Infantry support. Yeah. Yep. So so yep. tank on tank combat so, did happen, but it was very um, it was typically mm. rare, and it was not something which Japan invested a massive amount in early, and so they were very behind in the late mm-hmm. the later war. Mm. Um, but yeah, more than two thousand made. But again, for the terrain, that's it. particularly on these islands and things, there's not even going to be places that you can place these heavy tanks. Yep. You want them to hide in the jungle. The, the, um, the hard go is just it's cute. Like it's ninety. It points, is amazing. Ninety points for regular. You get a yeah. light anti-tank gun, which has mm-hmm. a lower anti-tank rating because it was a little it was a pea shooter. It's it's yeah. only slightly yeah. better than an anti-tank rifle to give you a perspective. Um, <laughs> so don't think of it as an anti-tank gun going slightly worse. Think of it as no. an anti-tank no. rifle no. that was slightly bigger, <laughs> slightly upgraded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about it as pens for. Yeah. Uh, infantry killing for the most part. What it does have is um, a forward-facing MMG in the hull and a rear-facing mm-hmm. MMG in the turret. Mm-hmm. Um, however, it also has the one-man turret rule, so you can only fire one yeah. or the other, um, which is, when you think yep. about it, that's actually no different than the coax rule. Everyone everyone yeah, screams okay. about it being worse, um, mm. but it's, it's actually... It's, it technically is worse, yeah. but it's but in terms of its fire application, it's only one or the other. The difference mm-hmm. is that the guy doing the shooting is also meant to be doing the driving, and that's where it's a problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. So you combining roles of commander, gunner, and loader, squeezing one man in the turret. Hard to do everything at yeah. once. <clears throat> uh, always necessary to take an auto test when doing an advance, even if unpinned. Yeah. Okay. Uh, fireman gun or remounted, not both at the same time. Yeah, okay. But 90 points. Well, that's it, right? It's cheap. Yeah. And it's a really cool model. It, it is. A, like, it's <laughs> um, like, yeah. And I'm using the, the cute definition. I'm using the ugly but interesting uh, <laughs> definition. Of, yeah. Because Gorch would well, have a heart attack if we thought that it was actually uh, the pinnacle of, uh, of, of armored design. <laughs> but, um, they also have some really interesting camo. I, I painted a couple of these, and they, they got some. They got some bright oranges in there. They got this this weird crisscross pattern that goes over the top. All of the tanks yep. do. Uh, it's just really unique. Yep. Um, tricky to paint as well. Yeah, um, a lot trickier. But having having just painted yeah, a bunch yeah. for myself, I was like, I'm just going to like do some swaps yeah. on here. Like that looks horrible, and I'm like, that looks nothing like what I was trying yeah. to do. Squiggles are hard. Yeah, <laughs> they are. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so far I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of the TDs so far. Let's, let's have a look at what else we got. Um, we've got the type 98, another light tank, 104 of these made 42 to 44. Um, this is a regular light tank with a light AT and a coax MMG doesn't have any of the one turret stuff. So you're paying, you know, and another 25 points to get rid of the turret and and get Um, this one I'm rating. So yeah, you, you, lose, yeah. Okay. you lose a machine gun, yep. uh, you get a coax MMG, um, you get a plus one armor rating, and then, but you lose one man turret, which means that technically you should be getting a more reliable um, vehicle. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, low velocity, just like the last tank. Yep. Then we got the Type 2, the Keto light tank, 29 of these made, 1944. <laughs> Um, what do we got? In a regular 125 light anti tank, 
and so yeah, light tank this, with an MMG. So this, this one loses the low velocity. Low velocity. So, so this is where they started realizing, oh, we need to actually give better guns to our tanks. Yeah. Now, bearing in mind, this is about <laughs> 1944 where they started rolling that out into production. Yeah, very okay. late. Um, so yeah. the low velocity. But probably tank. about the only time that they're starting yeah. to, to, <laughs> to come to into to. this instead of, instead of um, fighting. Uh, Chinese and um, you know British forces on 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 colonies, I guess. And and you you know at this point, mm. at this point you would have um, or very close to it, you would have American Shermans landing on beaches, and they're just like, mm. how do I? What, what is that? What? Like, there's nothing. <laughs> what, yeah, what calling artillery. Um, yeah, yeah. And then the Type Four Kinu, another light tank, uh, one fifteen. So this is a light howitzer MMG, well two MMGs, one forward, one yep. back, on a on a seven chassis. Yep. This yeah, so okay. that, again a bit of a stopgap for using up hulls of things that were lying around that they needed to do and try and get some retrofitting mm. upgrading. Um, typically, they were most of them stayed on Japan, the main islands of Japan. Um, mm. But yeah, the, look. 115 points yeah it's not yeah. shocking yeah but you, you you start looking at that type one in the td that we're talking about earlier and yeah and you i just, think you go you just for leave that. that you leave this one alone you yeah the other one. yeah um yeah then you have yeah. the you go uh medium tank mm -hmm. um so mm -hmm. <laughs> this this thing um how do i put this it was a 13 no ton mattress. tank that was originally conceived okay. in the 1920s based on the description of, of what it puts up. Um, and then by and then by 1939, so just at the start of essentially World War II, round about that yep. time, um, it was then obsolete. <laughs> and, mm, so, mm. and it would have been... So it, it, it so had a Talking about and, battles in, against Russians. Yeah. Um, so yeah. BT-7s. Yeah, it was, it was yep. meant... It was a tank designed for um, busting bunkers and things like that for trench warfare after mm. World War One. It's sort of where it's come from. Yep. But yeah, either way, not a good tank. Um, from the fiction, when you look at bolt action, it's yes. 125 points for a light howitzer turret mount, a turret mount with an MMG. MMG in the rear, mm. and a forward-facing MMG for... for a plus. Now, if you stopped reading there, you went, that's kind of reasonable, but you do need to yeah. read the special yeah. rule that comes directly after it because it's slow and slow. that rules it out straight away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, uh, situationally, obviously you got the turret, but, um, I don't know. I, I haven't used enough TDs to miss turret versus forward facing in if, my games if yeah. you can position correctly typically yeah. the turret or from a tank destroyer point of view if, if that's the role that yeah. you're allocating it yeah typically whether it's case mounted or turret mounted it is largely irrelevant um yeah. unless you're versing multiple mm. targets that's obviously the big the big advantage yeah. but um when typically bolt action being a one-on-one -on -one, yeah. you normally can position where you want yeah. it to go. and you want to you want to show your front armor anyway so yeah, and then we've got a Chiha. This one's more produced. You got a, a thousand yeah. of them, so, 135 <laughs> points. Light howitzers, a lot of light howitzers. Yes, yeah. heap. Um, when you think about again, they fought in jungles. They were about. It was all about yeah. stopping infantry, causing shrapnel. Yeah. And so HG is king, wherever you can. King. Um, mm. So ten more points, and you lose yeah. slow over I, the last tank. I actually use this tank a lot. Um, this, mm -hmm. this is probably now I, I use it because it was in the starter box when we picked up the Japanese army by default. Um, yep. but it's actually quite a reliable little tank. You do have to remember that it's a light mm -hmm. tank because if you extend with yep. it too quickly, despite it the word medium quick. Yep. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, but look, 135 points, it's a good investment. Sometimes I've yeah. just, I've like reversed up and just swung the turret around and double fired MMGs at people. And they've not been, they've been like, what are you doing? And I was like, mm. well, I, I'm just firing MMG. I just want to shoot, shoot the extra give you 10 shots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, I don't yeah. have many machine guns in the Japanese army normally. So, you know, yep. it's a, it's a source of two MMGs. Yep. That can be useful. Um, then we got the 
Shy Key, I think it is, uh, Command Tank. Yeah. Um, and this thing is, so it's, it's 150 points for Veteran, 20 to 30 made mm -hmm. overall. Um, light Tank has the Command Vehicle rule, so great for your tank platoon mm -hmm. setups. Um, and essentially, yep. it takes the Type 97 hull and puts some command mounting and, and uh, uh, you, yeah. you do whatever you need to put ra radio equipment in instead of a gun and things like that. Yeah. Um, then you move into the Shin Hoto or Kai Shin Hoto Chai mm -hmm. medium tank. And you can see like the naming conventions for the Japanese tanks is essentially they took the previous version name and then they would just label yeah. what they changed. So like... The, the Kai Shinto mm. essentially translated to new turret. So yeah, it was okay. A new turret, Chai okay. medium tank. <laughs> That's yeah. where they named yeah. it. Understand. As opposed to like Chai Ha 2 that, or something like very, that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I like it. But this one 155, 155 reg. Yeah, medium anti tank gun. Medium anti tank gun. Again, so that, tank. It's, it's, <laughs> that's, it's a Chai Ha with a medium anti tank instead of a light howitzer. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Yeah, no. Nice. It's not bad. It's not great. Yeah, yeah, especially when you're 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 lacking AT um AT options. Yeah. yeah. Um Ooh, now we have a medium tank. The first one that you get <laughs> This thing looks ugly though. <laughs> well, so this thing is so the picture directly above it in the PDF, for example. Oh that's, that, that's that, not, that that that's for the Chiha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um so the Chihi yeah. looks a little bit different. Um yeah. it's still yeah. an early, early war design. Like so it's like mm. you're coming into sort of principal service 1945, manufactured 170 of them. Um, most of them stayed on Japan because uh, they were mm -hmm. so they're not even sure if they saw combat properly or not. Some might have been at the Philippines, um, but mm. a lot of stuff that was sent to the Philippines to go and defend it was actually sunk by Allied submarines or Allied um, convoy hunters. Okay, so, right. Um, yeah. yeah, it's like it's like it's unknown, but medium anti-tank gun, rear-facing MMG, forward fan, like it's the same, that's configuration basically doesn't change. Yeah. The difference is this one is almost 200 points and this is the closest thing you yeah. can get to a yeah. Sherman equivalent in the Japanese force. Yep, yep. Um, yep. At, at around, but, yeah. But when, yeah, when you're approaching that 200 points, you start to think, oh, yeah. now, we, now we're just, just hitting regular medium tank. Yep. Obviously, there's not much options after this no, it, so you it, might want to consider it if you want a survivable vehicle that can do some you, damage yeah. to other vehicles if you vehicles. want to enter the tank sanctified glorified tank combat you sort of want to start with this rather than any of the others because the others won't mm. won't survive um yeah you yeah. go to the type 2 ho high but, so this is next round of improvements um and this is 175 mm -hmm. turret light howitzer again um interesting that mm. like they've they've they all drive that light howitzer profile. None of them went to medium howitzer. Mm. Like that. Um, is this about the same cost as the the P three with the the light howitzer? I think you, so. You tend to use it yeah, in your Bulgarians. Yeah, I think, I think that yeah. one's somewhere yeah. between one sixty one eighty. Um, so this, and that's what yeah. I mean. Like this feels about right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Japanese one's slightly better because it's fanatic. Um, Mm -hmm. Type yep. 3 Chinu, uh, so now we're upping type values as well as names. Um, and this is, this is again, yep. a Sherman, almost like a Sherman copycat, 190 points, medium anti-tank gun in a turret, mm. forward-facing MMG, just no coax. Yeah, so it loses a, a rear-facing yep. five points yep. less. Yep, um, cool. Then we get into some other cool stuff, so that we've got two, yeah. two types of amphibious tanks. One's a light one, and then one is a... Uh, essentially a medium. The light one yep. is a light anti-tank gun with a um, coax MMG and a forward mounted MMG. So actually a double forward, nice. forward mounted MMG um, and 95 mm. points to boot, which that's yeah. not yeah, shocking. Yeah, you definitely consider taking this and then you go, even if you're not doing any amphibious yeah. and stuff. And then you go, yeah. why would yeah. not many people take this? And you go to the special rules and you go One amphibious. Man. Okay, normally amphibious means it can only, it's able to cross water features. You don't normally restrict it to only water features. Oh, low velocity AT gun and one man turret. That's yeah. why it's 95 yeah. points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then the, essentially the version, mm. the medium tank version that is not one man turret or low velocity is the next one, which is then medium mm. anti tank. 200, 200 points. points. Nine plus, double MMG. 
not shocking. Mm. Not bad. But, but yeah. also nothing stellar. Like, you're not getting any efficiencies. Mm. And the tanks end. <laughs> and we're done with the tanks. <laughs> and, that's, and it's something where I was like, I don't know how much shorter that we can get on some of these things. And it was like, oh, but we're not done. Mm. Uh, so I think typically that's why you see the Hora come up as such a popular choice. And yep. is those tank destroyers and those SPGs are such good value for, for what they offer mm. compared to the rest of the range considering that you make up for your anti-tank elsewhere, but that is a choice that you have to make. Yeah. Yeah. We move to cool. tankets and right. armored cuts. Sure. Are you good to... Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to run through. Um, 12 of the Type 87 <coughs> were made uh, throughout 3745. Um, so these are based on uh, imported British, British yeah. Vickers Crossleys. Yeah. Okay, so they Im- imported them. stuff. Yeah, they copied them. Yeah, okay, um, cool. These are um, cool. Sev- 70 points, two, tar- two, a two turret mounted MMG. Seven armor value. I'd take and that. And not opened. That you, sounds You don't nice. have Reki, which is, that, that hurts a little bit, but it, but, it's, yeah, because but of, 70. it's because of how they fought. Um, but This is a P1. This is a Panzer 1. And, and yep. they do work. Like, in, I, I run them in most at the moment. And if it's armored car, then it's going to have the the That's wheels it. yeah yep wheeled vehicle um so in in my in my list at the moment i run these and um they're they're brilliant like it's it's a it's mobile mm. double mmg that i can just pour fire into something and typically if i avoid the anti-tank threats as best as possible i have no there's no counter attack this just, is this is a great support weapon 70 points with, of with amazing, your troops yeah amazing yeah. the only thing if, if it had the yeah. option to give it recce for an extra ten or whatever, yeah, I'd pay for it. Oh yeah, hundred um, percent. But even so, just to give it that armor. Even so, yep. happy, happy days. Yep. All right. Type ninety two tank yep. yet one hundred and sixty seven made. So yeah, this looks like it's Japanese used in in Manchuria, so yep. China, uh, and Korea. Ninety points. Uh, Hull M- HMG. Mm. Okay, we haven't seen this one is yet. The first and HMG a MMG. in the list. And Recky. And it's got Recky. Yep. So this oh, this mate. is a so enclosed vehicle with this HMG is... with forward mount MMG with recce um, and ninety points ninety points. Oh, we, look, we were we were considering paying ten more points for recce on the one just above. This like, is this is nice. We, so you, you lose you lose a couple of shots off the um, from the previous sure. one. You got some you got some pen but in you there. Got, now. You got a bit of a pen. Yeah, and you know the other thing yeah. is also you are tracked as opposed to wheeled. So there is a slight difference in movement. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. But even so, but yeah, even so, rough ground is okay now. Yeah, yeah. now you've got even more options yeah. on where yep. to hide. Um, mm-hmm. Then you get to, Yeah, good for a jungle board. For jungle board. Yeah. Um, then you get into, so this is actually, the next one is actually three different types of profiles all mixed into the one profile. Mm. Okay. Um, and they're essentially armored railroad cars, uh, Type 91 SOMO, Type 93 uh, SUM IDA. And there's actually, I think, any, um, I think it's the additional units added another one or one of the campaign books or something. But either way, 55 points. Same profile. Yeah, 55 points, mm. armored car 7 plus, not open topped, one turret mount light machine gun. So this is like a, um, a BA64 equivalent Ooh. to what I run in my Soviet mm. Union. So I was very welcome to see this. Um, 55 points is about right. You're slightly... Yeah. The, the disadvantage yeah, is I'm, like, I, it's like you, you cost slightly more than a Jeep for slightly less shots, but slightly better armor. Look, the other way to look at it is five points above an MMG team that can move. It takes one shot less. But it's, it's also a mute, got it's an also armor a, value. It's got armor value high yeah. enough that it's immune, right? Yeah, so yeah. It's, yeah. I like it's it. It's not. It's actually not, like the different choices, right? Some good options at these price points as well. You know. I mean, the, the difference is, of course, is like you, you spit too hard in its direction, and it's gonna it's gonna collapse. But but that doesn't matter. Sure. Um, then you move into the Type ninety four tank kit, which is now mm-hmm. a turret mounted MMG seven plus armor. Mm. Recky and regular. Um, so this this as a tanker is still tracked, um, but it's it's mm-hmm. it's not bad. It's like same as you know, yeah. people use brain carrier spam. 
Yeah, extra, <coughs> extra shot, recce, 15 points more. Not yeah. bad. Um, <sighs> there's some, yeah, there's some good options there, right? It's almost like you can't go wrong. It's, well, and, and the go, yeah, well, the going wrong, I think, comes to then how you play with them, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Type 97, TK, Tankit. Um, so again, 95 points, like everything sub 100. Um, mm. This mm. one has a mm. turret mounted light anti tank gun. So, where we were looking at trying to get other anti tank options coming in, but it's an armored yeah. car with recce. However, this mm -hmm. also has one man turret and low velocity AT guns. Mm -hmm. So, I think mm -hmm. subpar compared to some of the other ones that we've seen. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's, it, yeah, okay. It's, there's some fairly yeah. strong contenders so in the, that slot. The equivalent, the, the Hargo tank is 90 points. Yeah. Which has the same profile. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And so you pay five more points. You get, you recce. get recce, and you got you and you got and you wheels, wheels yeah. instead of a track. Yeah. This one is. I like it. So this one's a tank yet, so it might end up with tracks as well. But it doesn't matter because you used to get five points for recce. That you know that's still not bad. Mm. Um. Mm. And yeah. then we're into like, and, and that, but that's actually like. What is it? One, two, three, four, five, essentially five different types of armored cars or tankettes, two of them primarily being largely tankettes rather than armored car. Um, that's that's all you got for your selection, um, which it's they're actually mm -hmm. all relatively okay. Mm -hmm. Let's Very talk cool. about anti-aircraft. AA vehicles. Surely lots of island defense and we've got lots of mobile anti-air anti assets. <laughs> no, 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 you have, you have one. Yeah, you get you one. Get one. <laughs> <laughs> you get a Type 98 um, truck with a 20 millimeter auto yep. cannon on it. Um, so this is a platform mounted light auto cannon with 360 arc of fire on a soft skin truck for 50 points. Yeah, 50 points. Um, Very yeah, cool. It's, it's a, like if light auto cannons could be done as like just weapon teams by themselves. Um, this is kind of what I expect yeah. the points cost to be at, except this one can move. Um, and I'm, I'm just like, it's mm. it's look, mm. it's not the best choice, but it's actually not bad. Like it's yeah. If if, if I can't squeeze in my uh, Type Four, I might be looking at this. Yep, yep. Um, or even the, yep. even if you wanted to take, if you wanted to be really nasty, you take the or not really nasty, but if you really wanted to double down. You take this one with the light auto cannon and 360 on the truck, and then you take the fixed light auto cannon 20 millimeter and you yeah, pit, you yeah, make that the yeah, twin. Yeah. And add in the extra and so, dude. And so you yeah, the, yeah. now I've got extra crew and I've essentially got three auto cannons. Mm. The trick will be that you have to coordinate their fire on the one target and just try and blitz it. Mm. Um, so that, but that's it for the one. Yeah, um, nice. And then we get to transports and tows. Some trucks. And this, this gets a little bit, um, a little bit interesting. It's, it's not lazy writing from the, the rules people or the publisher, just to be very, very clear, but it's like general purpose trucks. And it's like, there are simply so many different types of trucks that they were operating over in Japan. Yeah. And the, it's it was not built the yeah. way that European cities were built. And so a lot of their trucks were, were just different or made by different people. Toyota was obviously quite mm. big um, back then still. And they were oh. producing huge amount of trucks. Um, the estimate that they've got here that they were able to roughly approximate was 50,000 trucks um, just yeah. of the one type. Uh, and essentially, they were, Toyota was copying things um, from other places or creating yeah, their own Europe. designs. Like trucks were trucks. Um, so mm -hmm. 41 points for the regular version, though. Yeah, yeah, a bit expensive, but it can carry thirteen and, and, dudes, and that's why they're charged a little bit more of a premium, yeah. is because they can carry thirteen. Yep. When you go to the light truck, mm. which obviously would then be a slightly smaller version, you go to the the more yep. regular thirty-one point or approximate costings that we see for regular. Um, but these are only yep. carry eight men, so they cut down quite a bit. Um, yeah, both have the option to put yep. it into one. Um, and then we get to some really mm. interesting stuff history-wise. So we do have, so we've got a couple of different tow-style vehicles um, that are in, in, in play. <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. But w one of the things that is really odd about Japan is they have 
half track and track armored carriers. So the Hoha half track type type one, mm-hmm. um, and the um, the Hoki carrier. And there's a couple of other. Um, there's a Sodar mm-hmm. carrier and a Prime Mover for tows and um, things like that. But most of them um, they were used for ammunition and towing guns. And so they're summing up most of them. They're like sort of armor seven um, or armor six. And typically, four mm-hmm. to five men, um, sorry, four to six men. Some of them have slow, some of them have open top. You know, th- th- those things are transport. You can sort of expect that. The reason that the Ho Ha and the Ho Ki are different is not just for their, their costs. Like the Ho Ha is 111 points, so it's slightly, slightly cheaper than um, some of the other mm-hmm. half track variants. But it carries mm. 13 men. I know. What what is the, what is with this ho key though? Well, Seventy one so, points. Yeah, so dropping dropping down to the ho key. So you're spotting where I was already going. So the, the half track holding thirteen is not that unusual. The type one ho key though, so it's a fully tracked vehicle, so you give up a little bit of movement, a little bit of pivot. Um, mm. and it typically okay, okay. it yeah. typically will be an artillery tow is is what they use. It, it wasn't really in mass production because by the time that they were coming in, it wasn't a priority. However, from Bolt Action's point of view, it's 71 points yeah. for regular. It's an open-topped armoured carrier, oh, so for 7 plus. So you're looking at almost, so not the points-wise, but you're looking at an armoured um, carrier, Bren yep. carrier sort of profile. You can add a machine gun to, f- to do the forward arc, and you can add a machine gun on the rear arc. Rear arcs maybe not as useful, but hey, if you've got one there, it can, it can pivot out to the you know forty five or whatever. You could yep. get some extra shots. Now, the size of this particular vehicle is slightly bigger than a Brent carrier. Okay. Okay. Carries thirteen men. That's crazy. It carries thirteen men. So how can you 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 can't protect thirteen men for that amount of points anywhere else? It's it's. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure in. Certainly, in some of the trucks, you might be able to get around that sort of a space. Um, mm-hmm. But this is a seven-plus armor carrier that carries thirteen fanatic infantry, and and I'm just like so. My, mm-hmm. And this is where we can probably move on to my list um, component. So, yeah, my Japanese list that I've been. I have seen a few half tracks that you've painted, yeah. you've printed, right? So my my yeah. Um, yeah my Japanese list that I'm playing at the moment um, is nicknamed the Hokey Pokey. Because mm. I have, well, depending on the formatting okay. of the list and the points and everything, the, the core of the list is um, three, sorry, two IGA squads, um, just just mm. their regular squads with uh, eight, eight men like machine gun, um, an engineer squad with a flamer, um, eight man strong, a, and then I have two of the grenadier squads with dual light mortars um i also take a light mm. mortar team so it's five light mortars in the squads um and a few yep. other assets but all of those mount up into the hokies and so the intent is that the hoki carriers are driven forward by um, the commander they're flanked by a type 87 armored car with the dual machine guns um and when mm. i get close enough they get out and they do the pokey Yep. Hokey pokey. <laughs> it is a very different very different cool. way of running the Japanese list. But but because yep. I can put up to thirteen men in each of them, the deployment mm. of that list is five units. Because I have mm. I have the between the eight man rifle sections. So eight man rifle section goes in one, two, and then the engineers at eight man go in the third. All the other infantry that are in the teams that are in the squads, there's less than 15 models, and I have 15 mm-hmm. free spaces, so they all mount up into the Hokies. And then an armored car goes down, um, and then I have, I think, one other asset that sits next to it, and it's like it's five units that I deploy. And so I'm, the, the, yeah. so not such a small, such a footprint, small footprint, and so, so I don't, I don't have problems hiding what I want to do or where I want to go. And yeah. then when I do start moving stuff forward, the Hokies just vomit forward infantry, and it's it's just yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's it's situational. I did not expect yeah, this. It's situational, <laughs> but the thing is, like when you dro- when you drop out um, when you when you drop out two units from two of the carriers, 
and they've got light mortars in them that just instantly start trying to drop in and range in on your fixed assets as well. Um, you're caught in the decision of like, I know that there's fanatical infantry that's about to jump out and start running towards me as well. I don't particularly want to just deal with those light mortars. But if I don't deal with those light mortars, there are four of them now mm. trying to range in on me. One of them is going to roll a five next turn. And then once one of yeah. them runs, once it gets the five over for the conversion, then I'm getting two potentially two pins a turn. But if two, and the problem is if two of them range in on me, I'm potentially taking four pins a turn. That just takes the unit out mm. of game. Like you're forced to rally. Yeah. I'm still ranged in, so I'm still going to hit you next turn anyway. I'm fanatic, so you can kill every other grenadier in the squadron. I'll leave that light mortar alive and just keep hitting you on twos. It doesn't. It doesn't yep. matter. Yep. It just doesn't matter. And like I played a game with against my dad, and, and when we reduced the terrain because I had a I had a proper jungle setup, which was yep. amazing. And then we realized while this is thematic, it's very hard to make any progress. So we after that game we recut it. We did a smaller one. Um, my dad was playing Bren Carrier Spam with five man infantry squads for um, Australia. Mm -hmm. um, went to rush them forward, and I managed to catch a couple of them on the sixes from the Grenadiers when they jumped out. They halted a Bren Carrier Spam list. Mm. And I, I sort of sat there in disbelief when I was watching the pins pile up and pile up and pile up. And I went, That carrier, if yeah. you let me land one more mortar on that it and the unit inside reaches nine pins and just disappears. Just gone. Yeah. Oh, my just God. Gone. Um, so the leveraging yeah, and a 13-man carrier in a smaller profile and being able to do stuff with it is mm. like when you've infantry a fanatic, that is that is a very scary yeah. prospect. And, and the importance of actually getting these infantry <laughs> to where they need to be like because transport so because yeah. the thing is right so the trans the, the transport unless it's actually destroyed then then you know okay fine you've got to deal with it but if you're infantry fanatic they're not going to run away and if your yep. transport is shot at but not destroyed in an attempt to slow you down you just bonsai the troops out yeah i, I love mean it. yeah <laughs> Why are these why are these carriers so cheap? Cuz they cuz they're amazing. Yeah, but like the the dis, the disadvantage they are amazing. the disadvantage is right. So is they not half is, is they not actually right? half tracks. So so yeah, they're, yeah. they're so cheap yeah. because you're reduced on your movement and you're reduced on your pivots. But if you can pilot a tank, you can pilot a hokey carrier. Yeah. And and then then it's not a problem. Um yeah look I, I i love taking inexperienced vehicle sorry inexperienced transports for the transport rule <coughs> of getting my things up the board but it's always a bit of a risk yeah. uh, and i feel the risk is can for me because uh, i don't particularly play um outflank yep. and i i typically have my transport somewhere in the middle that are, that are hiding behind some line of sight covering terrain and then if, if i need to wait a turn then I will and wait for them to move to the right spot and, and then have the assault squad come out. But yeah, I mean, I can't buy Hannah Max because they're just that much more expensive. Yeah. Let, let me, this, this is worth Let me it. blow your mind just a little bit further because I've obviously already, I, for my list, I did the math yeah. anyway. So I do take them as inexperienced in my list normally. Yeah, yeah. Because, I, w I would think that too. Because for 57 points, I buy them the MMG to cover the forward arc and give them a weapon, and now they come in at 72 points. So for one oh. point above what I would normally pay for them to be regular, I gain a medium machine gun. A firing, a, a firing yeah. arc, yeah. yeah. And, and like, so, for mm. one, so if I drop one of those submachine guns off an NCO later in my list somewhere else, that frees up the three points, yeah. and every hokey that I purchase comes in at seventy-two, inexperienced with a gun instead. Um, and if you blow it up, mm. I don't care. Like that—that's the biggest problem yeah. from an opponent's point of view. Is but I blew your transport up and I killed six dudes. Well, there's thirteen in it. 
they're charging and at they're you. And they're fanatic, <laughs> so don't care. Yeah. Um, and all that's yeah. going to happen yeah. is that, yes, you blew it up and they've got a pin. The very next turn, I'm going to bonsai charge at the nearest thing that I can see, drop the pin. Mm -hmm. I'm still fanatic, so you can still shoot me. I don't care. Yeah. Um, and if you're in cover, for example, and you let me bonsai into cover with fanatic dudes, I am just going to murder your guys. Like, that's just... Mm. Maybe something like Gurkhas could stop it in terms of, like, the one-on-one -on -one fight because of how yeah. they work. Sure. But anything but, else? But yeah, are paying a lot more to do that more, for that round of combat, a right? a lot more. Yep. Um, yeah. So I, I think we can probably talk about a couple of um, typical list pieces that, that run in Japan that are notably put forward as good. Now, bearing in mind, we haven't touched on any of the campaign stuff, which actually adds a lot of really nice stuff mm -hmm. to Japan. Um, your infantry are just solid. Like they, they don't look they yeah. don't look yeah. solid on paper because you don't have like all the special weapons and, and things like all special rules. Yeah, yeah. But they are solid because you will not run away. And I, I cannot overstate how important that rule is of being fanatic across the board for free. Like that's huge. Mm. Um, grenadiers are amazing. Yeah. Like Anyone, anyone has had like the mortars range in from a grenadier squad, the turn that they've moved in advance, so they're firing all their weapons trying to go, and you have that one mortar that hits one of your units, potentially the same unit you're shooting at, and you're just yep. like, oh, great, like it's not gonna, now it's not gonna is. do a lot of damage, and it's only gonna possibly put two pins on me. That's recoverable. But the problem is now, if I stay where I am, which I've obviously moved there strategically for the board play that I want, if I now stay there, the risk is I'm going to get hit by two more next turn. Yeah. Because yeah, one will miss, one will successfully range in, and one is already ranged in. So now I'm going, yes, it's still only D2 pins max. They're not going to double up that way from the pins. But now they're potentially getting on two separate template attacks that don't have to be joined, three models per template. So do I now have to go down, which is still going to leave me with two models per template that are hit. And yeah. That, and like, yeah. I'm still losing four models before the rifles fire. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is... It's, it's not good. <laughs> it's not yeah, good. Yeah. You have to move out of position. You, you, you ha and, the, and yeah, so... You have to make a, 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 hard, make a call. hard call. And, and that's... Yeah. Like, yeah, and that's how you see the grenadiers being used is to make those decisions. They're fantastic at rooting out snipers because a sniper is not able to kill enough rifles or mortars fast enough to actually then stop mm -hmm. being ranged in on. Um, over three turns, it's likely that a mortar team is going to range in on them before the sniper kills three models worth. Typically, yeah, of um, course, you'll have one of them range in, and then you just as soon as he's ranged in, you're like, great, well, you're going to take pins and may not activate, which means that's going to allow the next ones to go in. So I currently run my Grenadiers as units of uh, units of six, which is two mortars, mm -hmm. two loaders, an NCO, and yep. an extra rifleman. I have toyed yep. with sevens and doing a rifle, uh, NCO with a rifle, and then three light mortars. <laughs> um, I have yep. done, I have toyed yep. with doing that. Um, it is 75 points to actually make that work. Mm. So you're spending almost 100 points just on that unit configuration. But that unit configuration can essentially reach out and touch several different objects at 24 inches. So that's not bad. Yeah. Um, it's also incredibly useful at firing, like out of all the problems with smoke in the game, Grenadiers are one of the units that can actually make smoke work for them because mm -hmm. all three of them target the same point. You resolve them individually. Smoke's not allowed to overlap. And so if, if one or more of them hit on the same space, you get to place that conflicting smoke marker. So you can okay. actually create a little bit of a daisy chain. Yeah. And because you're zoomed in on the point, you then roll your hits again. And if you succeed to hit, you then can place that smoke in contact with it again. And so you can actually create so you make that them. wall yeah so when you have two squads ranging in on it at once trying to just block something out you feasibly could do it i don't recommend it mm -hmm. it's not it's not a yep. great tactic but it's much better than any other unit in the game short of um the mm. smoke observer shot that comes in from the artillery guy that doesn't scatter and drops like a 12 inch yeah. marker um yeah 
an expensive move. <laughs> and a one shot, a one shot move, and it's done. Yeah. And you lose your artillery yeah. strike while doing it. Um, mm. The Ho Ra tank, man, that thing is. That is so amazing. Good. That is a staple for like, sure. For, for people who are struggling to understand why that particular vehicle is so good, you need to think about the fact that the range on the heavy howitzer outweighs the inexperienced value. Mm. Like the, the I've just got my book here again. I can flick across. A heavy howitzer shoots. Too heavy. 72 inches direct yeah so 36 so it's, yeah so it's 36 to, to 84 indirect but you don't care about the indirect you actually want to fire a direct and you want to fire with yep. open sights as an inexperienced something and you just put it at the back because most games that yep. you fight 36 inches will be within your half range and they'll mm. that's if they have moved out of their deployment zone they're in your half range yeah, you're in. And yeah. as long as you're not on too much of an oblique angle. Um, and you're essentially yeah. like, well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just take the four. And if you're in cover and four sixes, I'm like, I'm willing to take a six. You want to go yeah. down? Yeah. Because I'm not going to move and I'm not going to have range. So you want to go down? <laughs> and if they say no yeah. and, and you hit with them with a heavy howitzer and they go, oh, I changed my mind. Um, it's like, of course, of course, because you just got hit by a heavy house and you weren't ready for it. And it's like, and then they'll go, oh, and how much was that? And you've got 124 points. And they go, ah, this should be... Because yeah. they feel unfair to them. Because it's amazing. It's incredible. <laughs> because it's point efficient. Because you can, you can fire one shot and get its points back. Yeah. Like you hit one veteran unit yeah. and you, you will eradicate yeah, them. You've done you get it. your points back and your efficiency's up. And bolt action doesn't yeah. always run on efficiencies. But at the same time, innately, if you can fire off one shot and eradicate a unit or even force a unit to be immobile the next turn or force a unit just to not want to engage in the, in the play space, like I said, you position it, you shut down a section of the board and you go, you go anywhere near that, I'm going to put a heavy hours for you on a 4+. plus. You can risk yeah. it if you want, but I'm 4+, plus. it's going. That's like, why? And then you get like double yeah. platoons where you take like more than one. I know. Because oh, <laughs> then that's just the price of like one medium tank and you got two of them. <laughs> and they're heavy howitzers. It's not even like they're medium anti tank shots. It's like, it's like no, no, yeah, they're heavy yeah. um, But look, I, I think there's, there's, a, there's a couple of other really good vehicles. Mm. The Type 1 Ho Ni tank destroyer is also actually good where you get that versatile. Yeah, one. yeah, I yeah. Like I that quite that like that. For 120. Yeah. Um, if you're really, if you're wanting to scrimp on your points but still get benefit, um, that you still get a great that option. profile is actually very yep. similar to the Su-76, one of my favourite Soviet vehicles, which has mm -hmm. that split profile, open topped. Um, it's armor eight, so it's technically a little bit better. But I also have to pay, yep. I think it's yep. 120, 130 points or whatever. So it's like it's almost the yep. same. Um, mm -hmm. Forward deploying spear mine dudes. <laughs> yeah They're oh my so gosh good. and three of them and it's do you take them with inexperience or vets it's I've, so i've actually taken them at all three levels um in different yeah, formats okay. to understand you know what works and what doesn't inexperienced is a little bit of a trap they're cheap and they're a cheap order dice and so if that's the key point mm. that you're putting them in their list and you've taken some other form of anti-tank all power to you go for it I yep. find that inexperienced guys just simply get shot down really easily. Yeah, yeah, because, especially if it's one wound. Well, the, yeah, because the thing is, like, if you're if you're within yeah. tw if you're within twelve, but outside of six, your opponent's still entitled to a reaction to shoot. So if you're inexperienced mm. and charging something, and they turn around to take the shots at you, it's like there's a good chance that you're you're gonna get pegged. Yeah. Yeah. Arguably at regular, there's still a good chance that you're going to get taken out. Veteran, mm -hmm. yeah, now it's not so much. Yeah. But yeah. that's why you take three. Yeah, yeah. Your, Your first, first one one's going to go down. automatically that's fine. to try and pull the order dice out. Mm. And then once the order dice is out, mm. you just ram the other one home. Um, yeah. When, when, I, when I played Japs many years ago, 
uh, I mean, I dispersed mine evenly across the board. That might not be the right way to do it. It depends on the mission. Because yeah, oh, oh yeah, definitely, um, definitely. But yeah, I could I could see having a backup to one of them and for that intended yeah. target. Yeah, maybe one will go down, but the next one will get there, it. There is um, um, there's a couple of selectors which uh, they actually allow you. Um, I'm just trying to find the one that I saw earlier. They they allow you multiple anti tank teams, um, which which then have three on yeah, their own. Which yeah. which in yeah. a in yeah. a Japanese list, it's like. No, why? Yeah. Why you do this? Um, yeah, here we go. So yeah, the, I think New Guinea had something yeah. like that. So the, right? the, the battle, the battle yeah. for Tarawa, 1943 selector, which is a special naval landing mm -hmm. force um, initiative, um, where they fought the US yeah. Second Division, I think it was Second Second Marine Division. Um, that has oh, this is disgusting. So it has the two special naval landing force components. It has zero to mm -hmm. four infantry squads which are basically all forced to be special naval landing force two up to two mmgs mm -hmm. up to two mortar teams up to three snipers mm. and oh, up to two anti-tank teams out of anti-tank rifles and suicide anti-tank teams like so that is so if you take if you took yeah. the three snipers and the multiple sets of suicide teams as the extensions for threes plus the anti-tank team um, that you're able to able to take. The anti-tank te rifle teams are just bonuses, but the suicide anti-tank teams and the snipers, you go, right, snipers are key and positional, so I want them to be set up correctly. The other six guys, mm -hmm. three of them might go hunt a tank. The other three is just to lock you out, mm -hmm. just board control, lock yeah. you out, take them as inexperienced, and it's like the whole purpose of them being there is a cheap water dice. And then off the back of that is mm -hmm. to force uh, to force you to not have any deployment options uh, simply by for mm -hmm. forward deployers and in that roll off. Now, when you're deploying nine units in forward deploy, there's a good chance you're going to have more than your opponent anyway. But um, yeah, and you're going to you're going to get to select yeah, where you want to be. But but you should mm. you should be able to lock out. You know, certainly you should be able to restrict. If you put all six of them in the same area hunting a tank, for example, the tank's not going to want to move. It's not yeah. going to want to move in yeah. at all. Yeah. It's going to be like, I need to get rid of them. Yeah. I just got to, I just got to run sevens until I kill some. Um, yeah. So there's a few nasty things. Mm, that is a tough selector. The selector also allows two vehicles as well. Yeah. It's tasty. <laughs> oh it's very God. tasty. Um, Back to generics uh, with your with your three yeah. suicide yeah. squads. Um, how do you how do you play them in that first turn? You are you just pretty much wanting to go down? Typically, how I play them. Um, so if I'm playing a mission like envelopment or double envelopment, for example, yeah. I will spread them out. Um, and the intent mm. is, if I can get that model off the board somewhere somehow, it's worth more points than it dying. And so, so you're doing something. I'll yeah. try and push those forward. But if I'm just let's say I'm setting up for an objective mission, they will typically if I can start on an objective or hidden near an objective, I will. Uh, yeah. If I know where your tank is because you deployed it in advance, so I could see when I was putting my forward deployers down, I will try to create a essential a, a triangular net that you're going to fall into that one of the three is going to likely pick you yep. up um it is very very likely that that's going to be around an objective um very very likely mm. uh, if you have multiple vehicles that you've spread across your entire deployment line i will potentially spread out with the intent to, yep. to basically go you're going to have to run the biscuit at some point with with and I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna come up and slap that biscuit right out of your hand. Just be like, no, it's my gauntlet. I got my analogies mixed up, but you guys know what I mean. Um, mm, yeah, yeah. The the reality of that is, it's about creating some pressure and also some psychological pressure. So people are very scared of plus eight pen. Mm. Like, like, yeah. It, it's, people won't want to go anywhere near. And it. you should be. Oh, I mean, it's fair. <laughs> I mean, plus, I think plus. Yeah, yeah, plus eight pen is actually the highest pen modifier naturally in the game. Um, yeah. With the exception yeah. of things like demolition vehicles and um, 
like the Goliaths blowing up and stuff like that, or auto auto mm. death stuff. Mm. But but it's it's kind of like it is the best penetration value that exists. So you are right to be scared of it. Um, yeah. But you also the best way to play against them is actually just to to move a squad there or to move the tank there and actually try and get it to come out at you. Um, so you, you can't yeah, pre-measure. Bing out of that 12. Yeah, you can't pre-measure, so you need to try and you've got to be careful with that. But yeah. you, you need yeah. to ask the question of the opposite player and, and, and try and force them to make the mistake with their bamboos, with their uh, with their lunch miners. Because um, if they make the mistake, mm. they're very easy to neutralize. Very easy to neutralize. Mm. Um, mm. But if you, if you choose to just play defensive and go, well, I can't go anywhere because the spear miners are there. They've done their job. They've kept your tank out of the game. Yeah, yeah, they've, they've, they've already done yeah. their work. And that's yeah. why things like the hoe row with the spear miners works very well because your spear lunge miner guys just hold enemy opposition that would threaten mm-hmm. your hoe row back and your hoe row just goes, yeah, we can do this. Yeah, I've yeah. got the board. Mm-hmm. Um, big squads versus small squads is the biggest question that I normally yeah. see fielded for Japanese stuff. Um, do I go big? Do I go small? I really like the idea of running massive squads. It chews through points yep. very, very quickly and it actually gives you... It, it forces you into a very predictable play style. You know, mm. you know that those squads are going to run towards you. doesn't matter what squad mm-hmm. it is. Its job is to run towards you, stab you in combat, and then regroup with lots left. And if you're still big enough, you're going to run forward again. Mm. Because that play style isn't me. <laughs> I've tried a couple of different. I've yep. tried a couple of different ways. Um, like I've wanted to run a big grenadier squad supported by a couple of smaller ones, where you think like it's a ball and chain, where I've got one big, one big anchor point, and I try and fling the flail pieces. That kind of yep. works. Um, it can get nullified pretty quickly because you've only got the, the one mm. center unit. The one hitter. <coughs> yep. um, so that's where I've got to currently where I run um, undersized squads. I'll run sort of three eight-man, ten-man squad-sized um, pieces, um, strip the Grenadier squads right down to their um, core components that I want to To use. their role, um, yeah. Yeah. tack on another light mortar with them so that at any given point in, like I ran in one of the games that I've played recently I ran the two Grenadier squads and the light mortar um, all in the same transport um, all in the same mm. transport so that, that gave of that meant that when they got out it was basically this guy gets out to here for six and fires his light mortar off and tries to tries to get you sniping for example oh didn't get that okay yep. This Grenadier squad gets out. We're going to fire a rifle and two light mortars at your sniper to try and get him out. Oh, well, the rifle's at seven. Yeah, that's fine. I don't care. I care about the sixes. You roll, <laughs> roll the two light mortars. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, didn't quite yeah, get there. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to get this squad out and I'm going to fire on your sniper. And all of a sudden, yeah. the sniper's got five light mortars trying to range in on him. It's like, and you can only actually kill one at a time. And this, this spread between three mm. different squads. It's not, not going to happen. Yeah. Um, and then you get the squads that break the rules that are in the campaign books, which you know, we'll, I'll talk about those later. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, th- that's a topic for a different conversation, I suspect. That that's a, that would be another yeah. video, definitely. But um, in fact, uh, I think New Guinea might be one of the more interesting ones to try. There is a lot of special rules, um, traps and tunnels and all kinds of stuff. New Guinea's great. Um, and obviously, like the, the Aussies are really expanded yeah. there. Yeah, um, that might be a good option if you guys can let us know in the comments what you want to see. Because um, we're getting close to getting through most of the main armies. We've still got a few to go. Yeah, I think we, we've got a couple more. Um, like we've got the two minor book nations, essentially. So, so yep. um, France and the Allies and um, armies of Axis and Italy. Um, we've got to go, got to go through those. Um, but I think we've covered all the main books now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think Japan so. was the last, the last big five nation to be covered. Yeah, um, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Now we're on to minor mm. nations, which is which is interesting in itself. Mm. Um, There's a lot of fun in there. 
And then, yeah, yeah, I'd love yes. to have a look at some campaign books oh, together. Yeah. I think um, we, we, yeah. we have to, I think. Yeah. The, um, but, but in terms of um, armies of Japan, look, it, it, don't feel that you have to play the Bamboo Spearman list. There is actually a yep. lot more flexibility in this army book than what people give it credit for. Um, it just takes a little bit more to see it. Those, we those weapon yep. teams, for example, and being able to just add crew and that they're fanatic. I'm like, I missed Yeah, that, that was really interesting. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I, I completely skimmed over that most, my first most reading. Most people do because they don't they don't connect yeah. the dots to go, actually, that's that's really yeah. good. Um, yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's a big one. That's a really big one. And mm. then um, mm. uh, I think the other thing is that you the actually do have very solid infantry and and you you mm -hmm. have to play with them to understand which way you prefer um it's like when, it's like when you're playing any war game right like you have to understand what you you actually like as a play style you you can't just pick up a list yeah. off the net and be like oh, i'm just going to be able to pilot this 100 percent. you need to practice with it you need yeah, to see if you like works. it if you don't like the type of list, you typically find it doesn't work for you. That's just how wargaming seems mm. to go um, because you won't be looking for where it needs to maximize its opportunities because you're trying to play it a different way. Um, and so, yeah, and that's definitely what happened yeah. to me. I, I was I was missing everything that I'd be doing normally yeah. with with a with a major nation, yeah. I guess, uh, and I, I couldn't see it. I was too new as well. Yeah, um, but uh yeah this is this is really giving me some second yeah, thoughts i think there's there's a lot um there's a lot in this space with with japan i think that it requires a bit more finesse than what it appears on paper like when it appears on paper you just like and that's mm. like for example with the bikes with the squads it's like oh all my yeah, what's the point of giving my squads bikes and i'm like well typically with that one you don't pay for it unless you know there's going to be roads for you to leverage them on but when you do know there's going to be some sort of roads there, like at an event, you'll typically be able to take advantage of at least one road somewhere for some of the game. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You only need it for yeah. one move. Just one move. Just the first one. Yeah. Just run everything yeah. up to essentially 24 inches of, or as close as you can get. And unless they spend their entire mm. turn destroying that unit, you will be able to do something next turn. Um, because, and then 100%. that buys time for the rest of your army to get up. And that is the point. Um, you know, it's, mm. it, there's a lot of interplay between the squads, but, um, yeah, it's, I'm enjoying playing them at the moment. I'm enjoying playing them in my quirky yeah. way at the moment. A lot of people are like, you brought like track transports for Japan. I was like, you wait till you see what jumps out. Of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was definitely the right time to start exploring Japan and that you've, you've gone down this route because mm. it's quite different to what you see on paper yeah. at a glance with this army but so this this is this really opened my eyes um i, I they, they're much different to what i anticipated mm -hmm. um which which is also i think part to the community as well yeah. i mean we, we we just talk about bamboo spearmen for the most part online um so yeah there's a bit more nuance to it so i think this is this is the episode to check if you want to know a little bit more about japan thank you so much dan that that's really insightful um yeah uh, you can follow us on um, youtube facebook um we're on what you call it instagram as well mm. um but yeah western tabletop is the channel on youtube we are the hmg podcast you can get us on spotify all the other podcast apps um tune in with us next time hopefully with more of the crew uh, but yeah uh, this this was great Dan uh, Armies of Japan another HMG episode hey. down uh, we'll catch you next we time we will indeed um, thanks to everyone who's listening and um, let us know your comments awesome right. catch you Bye. next time <laughs>